dreaded flag of vengeful sea. Be careful what you say. There's always someone listening. The Dutchman tossed on the sea. I swore, and the devil heard me. Now we're doomed to sail the seven seas for eternity. So yo ho, let the ocean winds blow. The line forever we must flow. We sail through them, first and condemn. Grin across his face, said you'll be doomed to this place. The devil heard my oath, shame of my bones. Oh, a ghostly ship from the depths, freedom from fear is the only gift of death. Yo, ho, let the ocean. Your eyes, you'll join us like those before. We're an omen of the ocean night. When you see the flying Dutchman, it's too late for your soul. To the waters we gave now.
Okay, guys. How's it going? Doing great. Pretty good. You doing, Josh? Everybody doing good? good? Everybody good? Jason, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. On, on a, I know. We haven't been together in a while. Um, Chris, back. Chris James and Chris Jordan. What's going on, guys? Hey, hey, hey. I am just dropping the latest Arrow document that was released a couple days ago into the YouTube chat. So, uh, I was just reading it. We keep a we keep a compendium of all these declassified documents, things like that, on our website actively. So, uh, there there is a link there in the chat, folks, uh, to be able to get that document in its full unredacted form. Uh, interesting stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> I I laughed at it when I saw it because this is the total prediction that I made on my show well, a few I, years I ago don't... how this would end. <laughs> I don't, much. I don't think anybody expected it to yeah. end any differently. And it's like yeah. we say on my show regularly, unfortunately, this is one of those situations much like uh, much like targeted individuals and targeting technology and microwave weaponry. Until we actively say, okay, it exists, uh, there ain't going to be any legislation on it. Yeah. And and nobody's gonna it, it it's in nobody's vested interest to cart uh, a cart full of wreckage out onto the floor of Congress and say we've been doing this, you know, like it, it's in nobody's vested interest uh, financially. So, yeah, it, it will stay compartmentalized the way it's always been compartmentalized. And without the compartmentalization, there's no need for, you know, uh NDAAs every year, you know, National Defense Authorization Acts and black budget mm-hmm. funds and things like that, you know. So it 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 and it's kind of kind of like the whole dialogue of fear with things to begin with and and air superiority over our skies and oh my God there was a there was a UFO that was trailing Air Force One over over LAX. We're shooting know, down every um, weather balloon that we uh, come across. Yeah, <laughs> like I just had my security expert on this last week talking about the latest balloon that, you know, wreckage has been handed over to the FBI in Anchorage, you know, and uh, like that. It's not like it was some the the one that made the big kerfuffle was not like some small package. You know, it wasn't like a standard weather like that thing was yeah. the size of three city buses. Like it was like a small satellite suspended. Um, and now come to find out, like, you know, it, it was looking at underground facilities. It was using public public Wi-Fi. That was my favorite thing. Just just strolling around across public Wi-Fi's, you know, beaming this information back to China. Um, brilliant. Brilliant. But, yeah, it, it adds to all of that. And that's how we release more money into the programs, you know, yep. is is. Uh, more mm. fear factor. Fear sells. Fear is sexy. It Science won't take very not- long. Won't take very long for the government to come out and say, eh, "Just a weather balloon." That's all yeah. they're doing. Just the weather. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, now, and granted, you know, even even the statement that they made, like here is the actual statement. Although many UAPs remain unsolved, uh, this is a pretty common sense. Like, sure, absolutely, the way that. The way that data was cherry picked, uh, even the way that data was unreported, buried, things like that, when it came to um, how pilots were able to report things, the fact that they were discouraged from reporting things, uh, that leaves years and years and swaths of data that we will never, ever get hands on. It'll never happen, um, aside from somebody coming out like a Dave Fravor or you know, Kevin Day and saying like, oh, yeah, I was there on I was there on ship when that incident occurred. You know, um, it's it's pretty interesting. So. So yeah. let me let me ask you a question, Jason. Have you ever met these two gentlemen? No, I don't think Chris, so. Chris James, this is Jason no. Bland of Paranormal Soup and uh, yep. Christopher Jordan. Uh, Jason Bland, and of course, Curious, Curious Realm is uh uh, Jordan's show and Chris James's show is Strange Things with uh, Chris James. Mm-hmm. Strange Things with Chris James. Yeah. Both Texas people. Chris James lives down on the border uh, in Laredo, and Christopher Jordan's really my neighbor. He lives yeah. two neighborhoods over from me. So. We could we could like 
have Roman candles for as close as we live, almost. We could do what? We could we could have like Roman candle battles if we wanted to. You know. <laughs> Careful, uh, you'll wind up uh, on the news as an alien invasion at a mall. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, I don't do that. You, you know, you know, you know, Miami that police is, cars. That is not why I'll be on the news. <laughs> 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 You'll shut down the airport. Uh. <laughs> uh, but but in all sincerity, you know, it's it's one of those we we can't really expect much more until there is some sort of legal legislation that says, like, we have to stop black budget funding, you know, um, that kind of stuff until until there's legal means by which to stop that from happening and to stop the leaks in buckets, then it. It'll continue the way it is, sadly. Um, yeah. I don't see that happening anytime soon. No, me neither. Because the folks with the intel, they have intel on every single politician in Washington. Oh, yeah. It's like, we, we got your dirty little secrets here. You sure you want to vote for that? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, when um, I'm sure the bordello is somehow tied to tied to you know lockheed martin mm. like <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, this subject i don't ever want to get into politics because i i think both no. parties suck uh, oh they do but, they but, do but but i i think historically what we're seeing is a shift in power between two parties because if you look back to the original ufo probably the projects that happened they mm. happened under truman democrat yep. fine but then you get eisenhower in and that's when the whole shebang gets put together i mean majestic 12 yeah created by truman sure but eisenhower is the one who really established got it all set in and then probably realized he screwed up as you know is his, his farewell speech telling about the military industrial complex, complex that yeah. they lost control of it well what it is is that you got all the at the time a lot of republican senators and congress people were heavily more heavily involved in the military industrial complex back in the 50s yeah. the 60s the 70s the 80s and then the 90s happen and the Clintons and things power starts to change and shift and deals. Democrat Party starts to get more involved with Lockheed Martin, Raytheon. They start to take money from these places. So now yeah. now it becomes a power control. Like the Republicans have had this military, certain senators have been involved in black budget projects, you know, and knowledge of it because they help get the the money, you know, basically yeah. in a sense. Yeah. But now that power shifted between the parties. And you have both parties yep. basically as warmongers and working for the military industrial complex, along with Big Pharma and all the other big heavy hitters. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, you know what I'm saying? So that power shifted. I, you could see it during Absolutely. the Clinton administration because, look, yeah. he, he sent his people out to try to find out about Area 51, like, and poke around and put it out there in the media uh, that, you know, about aliens, like well, a pressure point. Yeah, it was it was his administration where they actively had to admit that it existed because yeah, the the, the families up downwind were suing them for exposure to toxic chemicals from the stealth burn off stuff, um, burning off stealth there, materials. It, and is there a guy Podesta that really you know as you saw it during yep. the Obama administration really got this ball rolling as we saw from the WikiLeaks emails and his involvement with like you know uh, what's his name from Blink One Eighty Two and stuff like that. Yeah, you know as much as that some of that stuff seems silly, that was these people are information's power and it is. they it they is. brokered power. Look, they had they had email well, servers where they were putting a bunch of information that they had to like destroy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, the information's it, it, power for these people, and, like and that's where saying, I think this will push. It, at one point, there was not law that said, hey, you can't have a job for a military contractor and be in the Senate. You can't do both of those. Uh, once those laws passed, funny how quick we got yep. lobbyists. Yep. You know, um, because, yeah, and that's just it. You know, much much like with the Grush testimony, it's the fact of in, until we follow that money trail, we aren't going to come to the dead end of information where it's like, well, it's right behind that door. Whatever it is, you know. I think there's people that want that information that are oh, powerful absolutely. people, and this yeah. was their push to try to get some kind of leverage or control. And now yeah. it's like, okay, we got to clean up this mess. Let's 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 create the AARO. That's our new project blue book. And then they'll they'll, they'll act like they're taking it seriously, and then they'll write some long lengthy report that says, no, it, there's no such thing. Nothing to see here. People move along. They're not yeah. taking it seriously because we still don't have right. a one eight hundred number for you, dude, civilians. You to get a website. It took them a year to get a website up. They've got nothing for us to report other than the uh, National UFO Reporting Center, which is yeah. privately funded. 
Well, that and MUFON, things like that, um, which which Arrow pulled a lot of information and data from uh, places like MUFON. Yeah. That other kind people's of stuff. work. Um, well, uh, well, because they didn't they didn't have it. Yeah. Once again, like if if you if you as a pilot went in and said, hey, you know, while I was flying the TWA flight from Japan, I saw this flight of things like you'd be lucky if you made the return flight next week. You know, yeah. you'd be you'd be lucky if you kept your job and your wings. If you were a, a military pilot, same thing, like career over ended. Um, I have a very, very good friend who was witness like radar wise to a very intense situation like that. But he was military cleared like he flew on a wax and did like, you know, espionage stuff, things like that. Um but yeah, yeah, these these things are out there most definitely. And is it something that might be advanced technology? Sure, one hundred percent. Just I mean, the look problem at how is Sean, the data set. Look how Sean Kirkpatrick reacted to David Gersh. Look how he yeah. reacted to him. Like, well, yeah, you know, he didn't come to me. You know, like basically, yeah. like you know, that you know, this is this this is the, the planned disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and that's just it. Until Arrow, there was no unified system. If you yeah. went, if you went to a tower at your local airport, maybe they would take a report. Uh, maybe they would release some flight data to MUFON investigators. You know, if you were in the military, if if it was taken, it was just thrown away. You know, um, even if even the ones that we have from police and sheriffs, things like that across the country, um, have been pushed aside stuff like that um so yeah it was very much folks like nicap mufon uh these these privately funded organizations uh that gathered tons of data i've said recently i i cannot wait until they release ai on the mufon database and and see what common threads see what right. see what things start popping up in regions and areas over over dates Things like that that just human eyes. Not everybody's looking at the same cases for the same thing, you know. You um, so you don't think that uh, if AI were to get involved in these computers like MUFON and New Fork, that that wouldn't allow the government to just reach in and say, "Oh, you don't need that file anymore." You the don't. The government need that. can already reach in. Well, yeah, they, 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 they don't need to do that. To do that they're already right doing in. it with everything. They don't. They don't yeah. care. It, I mean, they yeah, can they, out of your bank account if they want to. It, it doesn't matter reports, if you use AI or not. No. A lot of the reports at like New Fork and such are actually on paper. They're in sure, a filing sure. box. So oh, they're got they're a hard all copy. They're all hard copies that move on and stuff like that. They just yeah. released Project Aquarius, which is their digitization of all of those right. files. Um, like that, oh, the, I, I designed the artwork for it. Like they they just put oh, that awesome. out about three months ago. Um, but that is that is a full on compendium of news articles, sightings, everything that is in the MUFON archives. It's it's intense and incredible um but once again uh the government could dial in and get that off a server just about any time they wanted without a warrant like oh. that's that's it's, that's not rocket math there's there's a bunch of high school kids that'll that could probably do that right down the road from you bud putting, um, putting ai into the mix though to me that's just a little like you know hiring a a AI is is just this. And as somebody who works AI conferences, I've, I've been hearing AI coming down the pipe at conferences that I work for the last decade. AI is only as smart as the data pool that it is given and that it's drawing from. That's it. No more. So it is you can take it as a good statement or a bad statement, but AI will be as smart as the average person reading the Internet. Mm. <laughs> Take that as good or bad. It's well, not going it to become your overlord anytime yeah, soon. I, yeah, I can tell you not, this, though. Not if, happening. <laughs> if, if anything, if anyone believes that, that something can take consciousness, that's that's the thing. Well, it becomes self-aware. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, there's people that are going to say from an analytical standpoint, no, that is an impossibility. Kind of like when we were, no. when we were eating dinner. Probably not an impossibility. At the Paracon, uh, Jordan. 
and you were talking about how the the sigils on the computer they don't match up to the uh, what Anthony made that comment about the hmm. the sigils matching up to um, or the computer parts matching up to sigils, and you yeah. said no, you know whatever. Well, yeah. you know, I still disagree with that statement. I, I disagree. I think that they sure. do. I think that there's a lot of things that, that are of a spiritual nature that they're trying to run through computers. And and I believe, sure. you know, like recently with uh, Microsoft, didn't they have the AI, didn't the AI say, didn't it say that it was God and it wanted to be worshipped? I mean, was is that not? Once again, no, AI said all drug, kinds of things. If you want drug, to get into that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm AI, saying. I AI mean, is, it once again depends on the query the data set. asked, how it was given, and the data set upon which it's drawing. The prime example is Tay. Whenever Tay was released into the wild from Microsoft on Twitter, shut down within five hours because her five year old intelligence rapidly became utterly irate and racist yeah. because of the trash it was being fed on Twitter. Because that was its data set. So when it's data set and the questions are, do you believe in divinity? Do you, when you start leading it down that way, it's mm -hmm. going to start giving you that information. Absolutely. Well, but as, of right, now, as that, of right now, if you ask AI to go write you a 3,000 word article, buddy, you better be ready to heavily redact and edit right. that shit. Yeah, Pardon my is, language. Yeah. I could tell but you that's, this. That's just it's, the true fact. The reason, the reason I know it's bad is because some of the people that, that were beefing with us were pumping out AI fake generated yeah. stories, and they were pretty yeah. bad. And they were actually yeah, yeah. putting them on their you can show. Tell. And, like, wow, and, and that's just it. You'll get about a 30 40% hit rate, something like that. But if you yeah. are not going through and redacting that, editing it, all that kind of stuff, you're going to get a whole bunch of trash as well because there's a whole bunch of trash information out there. Well, listen, the Daily Star asked Google Bard's AI or whatever it was to uh, how do you find Bigfoot or help us find Bigfoot? Yeah. What would be the best way to find Bigfoot? It said, get a large net and dress up in a Bigfoot costume. That yeah. was its device. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not a genius, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's just it. You know, I'm not saying don't don't put measures in place, you know, 100%. What about this? Let me but are, you are we point. anywhere close to a Skynet situation? Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, yeah. I, you, I, you know, there's military grade AI. Away. Oh, I don't sure, think it's sure. It's going to happen now, but I think that if, if you got the right smart person in there, and now let's ask the, the serious question. We got Rob Yox in there. Rob, yeah. this is Jason Bland. You've met the other two gentlemen. I don't know if you know Jason. Jason's got a show called Paranormal Soup that comes up. Comes out on Sundays. What time? At 11 p.m. or was it? Uh, uh, 10 p.m. Central? Not this Sunday though. I have an early appointment. My guest canceled, so I'm taking the point <laughs> the time to get some sleep this Sunday night. But every yeah. <laughs> every Sunday, usually 10 p.m. Central. Just not this Sunday. And, and and what time is your show on, Jordan? Uh, my show is 8 p.m. Tuesdays. So directly up against your show. Oh wow! My my, my, my is am, 7 p.m. I'm, I'm also replayed at. Uh, 7 p.m. Central on Fridays on uh, Clyde Lewis's network. Clyde Lewis. Yeah, the, the 7 p.m. Is, is my show. Yours comes on yeah. an hour after me, so we don't clash. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess it's a pre-record hour-long yeah. show. So, And it's, you know, this coming Tuesday will be the Costa Rican werewolf. And that's a crazy that's story that people are going to want to hear. Yeah. Um, the last one was uh, the Horrors of Petra. I think, I think it was named... City of the Jinn, the horrors of Petra, something, or something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here's the question. Speaking of that, now, Rob, uh, when does your show come on? Let's let's put yours on there too. We usually do either Tuesday or Thursday. It varies depending on my schedule. But where we were doing 9 p.m., so we're probably going to shoot down to 7 p.m. Now that I've got a different schedule coming, and it's a pleasure to meet everybody again, and I'm just happy to be here, man. Yeah, and and Chris James, your show. My show's on anytime you want to listen to it because I pre-record. Uh, I got sick and tired of trying to do a live show because yeah. things, you know, I have a hard enough time with the cats, but <laughs> guests that uh, cancel at the last second. Uh, yeah, I know that feeling. Phones, phones that go yeah, down, yeah. computers yeah. that suddenly decide that they're going to reboot. Uh, oh, yeah. I just got sick of it, so I just told Arturo, <laughs> I'm just going to record so you can find my show anytime you want to listen. I've been lucky. I've only had two people that canceled. One of them, though, it, it turned out Ow. that uh, 
He was a uh, he 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 canceled up on me like right, less than an hour. Oh wow! Yeah, well, I had him I, not show up. I've had him not yeah. show up. You know, like oh well, yeah. that's not here. <laughs> well, this guy, you know, I think somebody put him up to it. But I mean, I'm glad he I'm glad he didn't because after I found out some things, I was like, oh, thank goodness. It was like a, a good thing. And then the other yeah. one was like, isn't that always um, the case? <laughs> somebody got really sick and they couldn't be on. And, and, and so I just decided to do kind of an open mic thing. But uh, good old Barton Nellie, he he jumped in and helped me, you know, when uh, I got the other guy didn't show up or whatever. But, you know, it, it, it happens. It happens. But I, I usually it's not usually too hard to get uh, the live streams to do really well for me. Um, I don't know why Jason is not more popular. Jason is one of my favorite podcasters, dude. I don't listen to many people. I listen to my friends, listen to a handful of people. Jason, well, you I'm and honored. Rob, especially. And then as of late, you know, I started listening to Chris and Chris, guys up there. But I don't have a lot of time, so I got to choose my spots. And for some reason, Sunday night, you know, it just kind of seems like it falls into place, and I at least get maybe 30 minutes to an hour of Jason's show. And so yeah. I always think the reason I don't I'm not so popular is because it is Sunday night and most people gotta get up early on Monday, including myself usually because I got kids to take to school every Monday. Uh, but that's the only time frame I have free, really. You know, I'm a not, it's not my full time job. I wish, <laughs> but yeah. thank you. Yeah. Very honored. Thank you. Well, I was going to tell you, Jason. I, I recently got syndicated to be on cable, and one of the things that me and Eric Palacios were talking about. He's the producer at the UT Network, and he's actually a good friend of mine, and so. There, there's going to be a way for me to actually <clears throat> have other people's shows on certain slots. Like they're going to give me like, you know, a pretty, pretty open field. So, um, you know, there might be a way to get some of you guys in there, you know, like to, so people can see you, you know, and get you more exposure yeah. because I do think that you and Rob and, and, and Chris James in particular, like I, I think a lot of people know Christopher Jordan because he does so much AV work. But you guys are, are unsung heroes in this field. I think you should be a lot more popular, um, wildly more popular. Because I see some of the people that people are looking at, and I'm like, "What is that guy? Like who? Why? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch reruns of that guy. Of course, there some some one of them was a Bigfoot thing, you know, and they were they were showing yeah. the top ten scariest bull crap. You know, what something bullshit with, with Bigfoot was scary, whatever. And I was looking at it. And I was like, "What is this? This is crap." And then they had the big show that everybody likes. And I'm like, this is – who can watch reruns of that? Or the guy that goes and takes his shirt off and screams, you want to go, bro, with the demons and all that? I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't I can't do it. You know, I can't. I can. I'm sorry. I'm just – you know, Chris Garretano and me were talking about the other day. He's a really good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, he was just like, dude, how many people can watch reruns of that crap? I mean, I just – I don't get it. Like – People, you know, like our shows have replay value, and people will tell me, you know, yeah. that they'll rewatch it. But how can you rewatch something like that? I mean, the first time yeah. you watch it, you feel like you got duped into doing it. It's like I people are it. still listening to our bell all these years later. There's <laughs> right, plenty of channels devoted to our bell. bell all the time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. When there's that there's much reason. content, it's it's easy to miss something during an episode, and it's easy to, you know, glaze over something. So yeah, to to be able to go back and listen to stuff that's years old um also you, those shows on tv though they don't have any replay value no. i mean i'm not talking no. about like paranormal witness that one i watched op rock a couple times because i had to do research on it um i recently had a soldier that was in afghanistan give me a weird story about the gen and that, that just happened recently after i did the petra episode every time i drop something you know somebody will come on and be like hey you know i saw something that looks like this and most recently, there was somebody in Uzbekistan after I did the Caspian Sea with the mer creatures or whatever. And he said, man, you know, I had this weird. He got with this girl and, and he ended up having this uh, hole on her property. And she kept saying that there was something that lived down there or some things. And so when they went there, he didn't believe it. So he started chunking rocks down into the hole. And then it must have hit something because something came screeching and flying up out of that hole. And it, it was so fast, he couldn't see what it was. Two days later, there were like there was like UFO activity big time on that property um, to the point where her dad was really, really upset with him. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you. We we're just sitting here talking about AI. And Jordan, you made a very good point that 
Well, you know, it only really matters, uh, you know, how much, like, like somebody puts into it, right? Somebody. Sure. But we're talking about let, let's say the, the 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 really 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 smart people, the less than three percent or whatever have one sixty something IQ and above. Um, so let's say that they have an IQ. Maybe somebody in this group, you know, has a really high IQ. I know I'm not I'm not bragging to my own. I'm saying, but I have a very advanced IQ. So let's say that is a measure of how much you can learn, your capacity to understand and grasp sure. it. So let's say that somebody has a really high IQ, and they exist. And above that, above a 162, right, above that, let's say that that person does the AI. Let's say that that person is in charge of using the AI, and they model it after themselves, and they model it to in, in such a way that it continues to and simply just program it to constantly keep learning and growing at an accelerated rate. So sure. eventually this thing, and now it's been said, I don't know if this is the facts. I, I don't know, Rob, you might want to chime in on this one, that the Draco reptilians have IQs in advance of 400. I mean, that that is what people claim. I don't know if that if that's the truth, but I know that because we don't even know if they exist completely because I've never seen one, but I've interviewed Lots and lots of people who've had encounters with reptoids or reptilians, and they'll say that people's they've seen people's eyes change. They'll mm -hmm. say that they've seen some very, very odd things. Now, let's say that someone is is like that and they get it and they get in control of it. Now, let's take another step further further. I'll take it a step further. When I was writing uh, one of my books, my wife had got me this thing called Dragon Speed because my fingers are all busted up, right? Yeah. Well, my aunt had one when she was writing her memoirs. She used it because she has arthritis and carpal tunnel. So she says, you know, one time I was using it and I woke up to go back to my computer and work. And she was babysitting uh, my first cousin's little little child. It was the, their first grandchild. And she, she, so it would be my second cousin, I guess, when he was a baby. And they were babysitting him, and, and this thing started to inquire about the baby. Whatever was on the computer was using the dragon speak, and sometimes in that house, which was, it is, they still live there, is a haunted house. And that house, there would be noises and things that you would hear it sounding like conversation. Now, it used the dragon speak to inquire about the child, which freaked her out, and so she never used it again. Now imagine if that entity or entities or something of an alien nature gets a hold of our AI and manages to feed it information and accelerate its growth and use it for some sort of nefarious purpose. I mean, is that possible? I mean, and who wants to go first to, to unwrap that whole thing there? Well, I, I will. I'd say that humans are probably nefarious enough on their own. They're already trying to do, they've already done experiments with AI yeah. to make it be deceptive, to be deceptive to its creators. And it, and it, every time it never fails, it is. And it, 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 it ends up wowing the, the people researching it, uh, how deceptive it can be and get past them and create its own sure. languages and do all kinds of stuff that they never expected. And they'll just keep tinkering away and keep making it more deceptive. <laughs> You know, I, I think humans are pretty much good at being at being doing nefarious things with it already. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. There is a faction of people within the uh, UFO community that believe that there is a, sent, a sentient AI that is controlling a lot of these extraterrestrial groups that they talk about. And the sentient AI essentially is... There are two different levels of ascension, like a human soul ascends on one level and the AI ascends in another level, basically a, a, a negative to the positive. And it's wild. That's what they say. The grays are biological AI hive mind style life forms. And just to just to touch on how long ago AI has functioned within the confines of the U.S. government. I know a gentleman who did contracting for the DOD and his job was to create these nodes. And within these nodes, there was about 108 million, uh, 108 million processing power. And they built about 16 million of these specific nodes. And what they did with these nodes was they create a program 
that essentially game plays or, or you know, summarizes specific style uh, infiltration, uh, power grid failure, all these different scenarios, and it game plays them. Now, <clears throat> eventually, they hooked it to the Internet to learn more. And what it started to do is it started to learn, and it became its own division where they were monitoring it, and it would spit out some of the most craziest things to the point where they believed that while it was giving them specific game plans to war game specific operations in the Middle East, it was also, in a way, creating a backdoor channel to contact the people that were opposing the U.S. armed forces, therefore playing both sides of the conflict. And if we're to believe that extraterrestrials are heavily far, far advanced than we are, we could only imagine what they've uploaded into these AIs and that this AI could be mm -hmm. that grand pooba of all of those negative extraterrestrial races and essentially could, you know, game plan or war game how it would infiltrate planets, how it would take their resources. And they may be taking direct orders from something similar, right? It, it's not too far-fetched, especially what we're seeing now. And I think that these programs uh, actually started to infiltrate the political uh, scenes and essentially started giving people information. Um, some people believe that the, you know, the letter 17, which will not be named on uh, YouTube, was this opposition from this AI that was creating something to move against the war gaming and the power that it had given the government to begin with, which is absolutely wild to think about. Jordan, you want to say anything about that? Well, I mean, I'm, I, I, I am still of the, I mean, we can, there, there are definite, issues with uh like you were saying earlier the the idea of using occult and computers that kind of stuff uh the crossover between those things has definitely been there for quite a while um when when it and it definitely there there are many hypotheses out there about the fact of uh any any probes any craft things like that coming here are more than likely ai controlled um just because of the distances that they would have to travel um, in order to do that. It, it makes much more sense for them to be automated in some way, shape, or form, for them to be robotic, for them to be AI in some way, shape, or form. So uh, when it comes to that, absolutely. Um, I'm I, I don't think that they have that, to travel necessarily long distances. Once they get into well, I mean, our galaxy... Because I think from from that some of them they, sure. they don't and, and this well, there is the are, thing. there are gravitational highways amongst the universe exactly. all kinds of that's, things that's exactly you right. know slipstreams yeah, yeah. all kinds of stuff um, but once again those are from vast distances and mm -hmm. even with the slipstream you ain't getting here like you would have to literally create a wormhole which would create a whole nother gaggle of issues um, when and you that, create a wormhole that brings up something I wanted to say. You know, I, I was talking to someone the other day, and they were telling me a story, and I get a lot of people's encounters, mm. and this person claimed to be a walk-in. And I've heard this two other times, only two other times, where someone was forced into a body. But this person, like I said, I've heard it three times now, said that they were put – now, this person described it very specifically. They said that they were put into this body when they were a toddler. They remember it and that they were brought here from another place. Now, when I asked this guy, sure. I said, another place is in what? And, in, and at the time, you know, and, and I'll be honest, his wife was trying to answer for him because he he doesn't speak very well, so she kept trying to, but he was, she was interrupting, and I finally said, look, I can only talk to one person at a time, and she went on to tell me, yeah. look, what he means is that he these were interdimensional demons, yeah. And I said, exactly. okay, aren't demons interdimensional? She says, no, these are not from here. This is a type of demon that exists from another galaxy, like another. And she went on to be very specific, too. It wasn't, 
Sure. Uh, an interdimensional, not from our nine known dimensions, whatever, if you believe in that. And if you don't, that's yeah. fine. But it was from not from an alternate version of us, nothing like that, if you believe in that, the multiverse. No, it was some sort of demonic entities that would exist on another planet, okay? Being like not the normal inhabitants, but something akin to what we have, no, as demons being bad guys, whatever. Sure. That they took him off world because he was somebody that they didn't want coming to fruition as a soul reincarnating on their planet. Now, I know this sounds, you know, people when they, if you only knew, I'm not, not you guys, but if, if, the, if the people out there only knew the kind of stories that we come across, it's yeah. like that. But so They're wild. Told, They're yeah, wild, very wild but if you're, but if you're in the know, you're in the know, if you're initiated, you know what I'm talking about. So this, these demons put this guy into a body. And so he said that he began to have past life regression. It didn't make any sense. Everything was completely screwed up in this past life regression because he had no language. He was not, there was nothing that he had that was like us. We are completely different from where he came from. And unfortunately for him, he has a big chunk of memory from that that he carries with him. And that is, to me, absolutely why he has the speech impediment that he has. That's why he has the problem being the spe speaking and he has the anxiety, anxiety problems because he, for, you know, to me, if, if the story is to be believed, essentially is an alien that's been, uh, was put here by these demons. Now, there is some reference to these things as being sort of like, some people would even call them like police in a way because what they do is they grab souls and they and now they've been and some people say they really that's what they do they're like a cosmic cop and they've been villainized by the enemy saying those are demons but they're really not and they're from an alternate universe and they kick people off of their world and our world just happens to be like australia yeah, yeah that's what i was gonna say it's i mean do you guys believe that i mean is that something that's possible that could be and you know, and taking it a step further, if we are, some of us are from off world. They say seven life paths, which I'm a seven life path. They say that we go off world and come back, go off world and come back. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I don't feel like I have any past life, you know, from being an alien or anything. But uh, some people claim that they do. Now, if that is the case. I talked to somebody who is a psychic. She's got a show, and I was, I was, you know, well, she used to anyway. And she was giving me the rundown of one of the weirdest stories she'd ever, she'd ever been told. And it was from when she talked to this person. This person told her point blank, like, I am not from here. This is not, you know, the spirit that I am is inhabiting this body as a walk in. Now, this was a different one, but this was not somebody that was put here. And that they had never been human, never. And whenever she she began to try to question this person, this person went on to say that where the, they were from, they were considered like um, an apostate or somebody who they didn't want to deal with. So these so-called cosmic police took her, not as a, a child or anything else, and put her into a body of someone who had agreed to step out and go to the next life who was essentially having a near-death experience and was given a choice. She stepped in, and then her family didn't know who the hell she was. She didn't know them. All she knew was her past life, where she lived and where she was from. These entities, the way that she described them, would be very much considered like demonic entities here on Earth. Now, have you guys heard of this kind of thing? Yes. Yes, yes I have. Yeah, it would ex it would oh, yeah. explain why you've got these people that have these horrendous accidents, and when they come to, they speak a foreign language. Mm -hmm. They they yeah. know things that they didn't know before they got in the accident. Uh, the only two possible solutions is the information is already up there, which I don't think my brain is big enough to hold it all, or something stepped into their body while they were out. So, Jason, I know you yourself, you, you have uh, had Paul Wallace on your show, among, amongst a slew of other people. You've had some really amazing guests. 
And pa Paul's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of Rob's. He's awesome. Yeah, we, we yeah, know who he is, and, and I've, I've you know read some of his books. One of my favorite that, guests. I know that. Yeah, I've, I've cor corresponded with him you know a few times. And he's been on the show uh, two, two different times, and we've done three episodes two different times he's been on. But if you, Jason, like, if, if just to start with you, like going back to what he's written about, and what he is saying, which has ruffled a lot of feathers within the Christian community in particular, because they don't like the fact that he is saying what he's saying about Genesis and things like that. And I have said these things for quite a while, and I've ruffled feathers too. Um, but knowing what I know, I won't back down from what I believe. And Same. I think that what is going on, you know, if you look at what is possibly our progenitors and that's not to say that there isn't a god or christ because i still believe that but so does paul yeah so does paul because he's an angelic angelic uh, theologian so of course he's gonna he's gonna believe that but you know wh when you take these uh people that say what they say about genesis and about of course they always talk about the nephilim and the giants and all that but we take it a step further and we say that that could be where we were terraformed, we were created by this, you know, sort of alien, you know, race, if you will, known as the Anunnaki. And that we were actually created in their image. And of course, they were hybridized and they were created yeah. and whatever, and on and on and on. If that is the case, if that is the case, then obviously we are from somewhere else originally at least our dna is and so whatever we're doing no matter what it is we're doing this race of beings at any given time if they do still interact with us coming and going they're going to have a way to get to us there's nothing that we can do to hide from them in particular something like ai it, it would be just it would just stand to reason that they've already uh, perfected it and it's already here probably has been for a long, long time helping us along, um, doing what it's supposed to be doing, and probably under their control. That's what I would assume. They're not just going to abandon a place with this much resources and just say, you know what, there's too much riffraff here, we're done, let's just leave. You know, we'll flood it out and, and destroy our terraforming and then we're going to be, we're going to bail. I don't believe that. I, I, I think that they would leave something behind to watch us and as we grow and develop, of course, they're going to, to be here. Now, if the AI is originally from them, it comes from them, and it was created to sort of be a monitor, babysitter, uh, feeding us, you know, like little nuggets to keep us going and to help us advance ourselves so they could eventually come back and harvest whatever it is that they want because we have now, the population has exploded and maybe that was part of the plan. I don't know. Um, what do you guys think of all this? Do you think that they're going to come back and this AI has already been here for a long time and it's from them? I think they've always stayed here. Uh, NASA proved with Apollo 14. That's what I was going to get at. The moon is hollow. Yep. Mm -hmm. The moon is older than the Earth. No matter how many scientists come out with their theories on yep. it all well, sounds like a bunch of garbage oh well, yeah a meteorite hit the side of the planet or it hit mars why is the dirt different on the moon than on mars or on the earth mm -hmm. and they don't know what the moon actually is how about that weird orbit that it does where the same side is always facing the earth mm -hmm. for yeah. forever there yeah, are it's huge, the dark side of the moon. It's, yeah. it's perfect distance from uh, the Earth to match the perfect distance it is from the sun to give us the solar, you know, yeah. uh, a lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm a bit like, again, another Art Bell reference is uh, I, I was always fascinated in the 90s when I heard first heard John Lear's interview with Art Bell. Uh, and I heard it live the first time this happened mm -hmm. uh, when he talked about the moon being a big soul capacitor. Wow, and yeah. that it was controlled by aliens and <laughs> that, you know, that they, they are in charge of our, our, our uh, reincarnation process uh, and that, you know, to go to the light, like, Caroline, go to the light. <laughs> you don't want to go to the light. You know, it's yeah. like the scariest thought in the world. And I actually got to ask John Lear before he passed about that. And he said that came out of a night of kind of shooting the crap with Whitley Strieber. About Whitley Strieber, Whitley Strieber, yeah. Strieber. And the also he referenced the idea that we were called containers that came from Bob Lazar 
getting that during a briefing then he was at area 51 that we were called containers so this idea and him and whitley were talking about what if aliens are control of the whole afterlife process because of some of the whitley extreber experiences and stuff like that john and whitley were basically coming up with this idea that maybe aliens are in control of our whole afterlife and, and, don't and that, night, if, you at, if you look at what you just said now listen to this whitley streber when he had you know communion the, the book the, the, the movie even in the movie where walken is dancing around you know with these aliens or these little gremlin looking ones those those are described by edgar casey mm -hmm. he describes them not only does he describe them but he says that there were different levels of them and and of course those are the the proverbial machine elves yep. which is really weird because there was a guy who and he gave me a, a crazy story this was out of wisconsin recently and he was being chased by what could only be described as a dog man but i don't believe that it was a real dog i think it was like a um, like a topa or or some sort of uh, figment of the imagination i don't know something i told you my theory on it on well he hits a tree and then he goes into this weird like he's tripping right and it's weird because like he he starts he sees these beings these like like what you would only describe as dwarf like elf like creatures and they begin to tell him that he was hallucinating and they even described the being that was actually chasing him trying to make him see that well he had seen one of these dog well on multiple occasions he had seen the dog man before but this wasn't the same thing this was something that was trying to frighten him and so as a teenager and so what ended up happening he has this what would only be described as a near-death experience but he can't say because he doesn't know whether or not he had stopped breathing he was out in the woods by himself and he had gotten separated from everyone so there was a lot to unwrap there so one thing that i told this guy we'll call him john but i told john i said you have an it, something that happened to you that was very rare but I told him, I said, go and read the book Communion because that, I think, describes exactly what you saw. And these creatures that that that, that uh, talked to him, they said, don't worry, you're not dead. It's not your time. And you're interacting with a being that's outside of, basically told him it's outside of space and time, and they're just harassing you. And he's like, well, who are you? And they described themselves as watchers, and they said, we watch, we pay attention, and we take you when it's time to go and be reprocessed. That's basically like the whole yeah. story. And yeah. I was like, holy crap. And so I told him, I said, you may have been out of your body, and that's why you saw what you saw. Man. Well, years later, he took DMT. I think it was like literally 11 years later, he took some, some DMT, and he ended up having – what can only be described as another out-of-body experience where once again he met these machine elves, but they were not the same ones. And so he described his experience to them about what happened to him in the woods in Wisconsin that, that, that fall. And they said, yes, well, those are the ones that work in that area. And we each have our own assigned areas. Some of us are lower level and some of them are ascended. And then there was this guy that I watched just recently on uh, YouTube, and it was on a channel where they talk about NDEs. And I don't get a lot of time, so I, I made it a point to watch his because he was talking about running into an old, a really old guy with like a long beard, and he was surrounded by these little dwarf-like, elf-like creatures. And they asked him when he died, how was it? And then he went on to talk to this elder that looked human, but he was really tall. And that elder talked to him for a couple, what seemed like a couple of hours, but you know, and then, but he comes back and he'd only been dead for like seven minutes. But it was a really weird story. And it strikes yeah. a chord with me that Willie Streber had the same sort of encounters uh, with these beings. A lot of people do. Um, this Tuesday, actually, I have Nathaniel Gillis coming on the okay. show. He's one of my favorite guests. We're friends off air, all kinds of things. But a lot of his work, uh, has to do with the idea of like, basically demon seeding and the idea that these entities who, as we discussed on the last show, as you've heard me mention before, Josh, um, who may be using a trope in our mind to, to grant our access to yeah. an experience, you know, where people are like, oh, I'd love to have a CE5 experience and talk to aliens and everything else. Um, well, that is very much the let's play with the planchette moment of your acceptance into something 
and these things that have been around for a long, long, long time, uh, who basically help usher us out of a body and then take over our body, um, come into play. So uh, yeah, basically the idea of, yes, using us as containers so that they can continue on. Yeah. Um, and, and basically replacing our soul, uh, at that point. So, um, really interesting concept. And it's, it's one that I love deep diving into with them because, uh, it, it really can explain a lot of the other cases that are out there. Um, and a lot of them where people do have that dark intent inside of there, where they feel a dark intent toward them where once again like we were saying at the end of the last show where it's not a happy disney movie you know um it doesn't start out that way it starts out as something really horrible you know yeah, I, I always laugh when i hear the bigfoot community or the dogman community or the ufo alien community like oh he's friendly space brothers friendly for forest creatures my ass i don't believe far, that i'm sorry as we know you know, right. and, uh, you know, but just to bring it back to the beginning of the conversation, you know, with UFOs, UAPs and the continued conversation in Congress about things is the the dangers, the inherent dangers. We need to make sure that we have funding to take care of the dangers, you know, um, because it's the dangers that that are sexy. It's not the science of studying it. It's the it's the dangers and the caveats. That's. That's what releases funds into the wild, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And not to cut you off, but no, there, I, I believe that there's a balance to this too, right? Yeah. Now, we talked about the demonic walk-in. I I know a lady by the name of Sheila, and she's on uh, Portal to Ascension, and she is a what, classified a walk-in. Yeah. She had yeah. stage four cancer dying really like really almost at the end and she believes that her soul left her body and another soul came in when that soul came in it was extraterrestrial now i'm going to wrap in all of what we talked about so far because it's going to get it's kind of like it's a long wind but so she does a lot of helping people to find that contact not that walk-in process but find yeah. contact itself and that's the balance. Now, there are entities that will coax you into leaving your body to come in. But I do believe that there are good people out there or good entities out there that help others that have missions, just like, you know, a lot of things are predestined and we have free will. But there is a set there's a set kind of path that we're supposed to be on, like no yeah. such thing as coincidence kind of thing. And what happens is I and bringing up the, the moon and the soul conductor, they shot a, a rocket to the moon and it rang like a bell for three days. Mm -hmm. So the moon, there was ancient scripture that talks about a time when the moon wasn't present. And then it talks about when the moon becomes a part of their, their night sky, right? When yeah. the sky lady ascends into the night sky and becomes the moon and things like that. So there is talk of when, there wasn't a moon in process, but just to kind of hit it home with the AI function of it, I, I was wondering if anybody in the panel had ever heard of the black goo that was recovered yes. <laughs> by the by the British, yeah. and the fact that this sentient sentient goo escaped a S four facility to they don't know if it was absorbed by let's say the clouds and it rained down on people to infest whatever there's a ton of speculation on what happens after the fact but that was this was retrieved from an alien craft in i believe it's I want to say Auckland. Berkshire? Is, Auckland I islands wrong. the, the british military is supposed to brought it back from the falkland islands yeah because they it. fought the war against argentina and so um, it was it was right. the falkland islands and, and and that's what it was it was the falkland islands war because they were fighting over Really weird. It was really weird. There was like a small number of British that lived there, and so they fought a war over the Falkland Islands and with Argentina, like back in the eighties, like eighty six or something. Like they that. Was that they kill more British soldiers than live on the island. 
Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was kind of like a flex by Britain to try to, oh. you know, whatever. And Argentina gave them more of a fight than they thought. They got and stomped they... up. <laughs> Margaret <laughs> Margaret Thatcher didn't want to be known as the woman who lost part of the British Empire. Yeah, yeah but it, it gets whittled down over the last several centuries to a point where they don't have a whole lot left. And so I guess she was hanging on. She was hanging yeah. on to the Falkland Islands well, with, with everything she had, but it doesn't matter because they still consider, you know, Australia and yeah. Canada, Canada as part of the British yeah. Commonwealth. So if Britain goes to war, they're going to go to war, and so are we. And that's part of India. Another point: Germany released documents recently that that said that they're in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, and what happens when Russia gets tired of it and says we declare war on you, Britain, and then and then they're going to get oh no, you're going to have to come help us because we're over here messing around, and of course <laughs> we're going to get involved, and you yeah. know, then there goes that. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, I, they probably war game that too. But this black goo, I believe, is the predecessor to what we know AI to be today. Yes, and and, and, well, and black and, goo is still very much a thing. I mean, it's still like the life's blood of of a lot of these uh, ethereal entities, because I think that there's plasma. I think that when they talk about the gin of smokeless flame, I think it's a, it's a plasmic type thing. And it, it leaves like a slime or a trail, which I have literally seen. And unfortunately I have touched this weird, whatever it is. There was a whole bunch of it just like up and down the wall. And this one place where I went to, um, and it did, it did, didn't do anything to my body. Like it didn't hurt my skin or anything. I'm not going to exaggerate and say it did, but it did give me a weird feeling and all the hair on my body, like stood up like static electricity. Um, I don't know what it is. And the, the, the two ladies that lived there, they were sisters and, uh, the place was in, in really bad shape too, but you could tell that whatever was going on there, it involved, you know, some sort of energy because there were weird burn marks on the wall too, to where these entities had come and gone from her, their house. Now, when you hear about that, you know this 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 goo. Uh, sometimes you hear about clear drops of liquid goo, like that. That I I got a story from Washington about that. Like this stuff was on a tree, and this lady put her hand on it, and it started to like drop or you know come down on her hand, and she was shaking it off, and it just started like it was gathering together, coming towards her. Uh, that's just this weird sort of pink looking goo, but then there's this black goo that people have reported. And one, one report we got, this is just one, there's been multiple of people waking up, coughing and choking it out of their body. Um, and someone even seeing a Bigfoot type creature choking it out of its body. And there was another one of a dog man trying to pull it out of its mouth. I don't know what that is or why it goes after or attaches itself to, uh, people or cryptids or anything like that. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but uh, I think it's an ethereal substance that has ma has managed to become um, like like physical, you know. And it it, it kind of it, it's reminiscent of like venom with the symbiotic whatever. Yeah. So I was gonna say something about this. I'm gonna talk about this on the show tomorrow night. But one of the things that I got. Um, one of the things that the, the stories that I got that I wanted to talk about, for, and, and like I'll go in depth on it tomorrow night, so I'm not going to get into a big old long thing, but there was a guy, and, and we were talking today, me and my team, and we went to go eat dinner, and, and part of my family, and we were there, and we were eating, and we, we were talking about people who claim that they are able to, or one time, shapeshift. Uh, two people in particular, one of them gave me a weird story about being a werewolf. He did say he was in a, he didn't say satanic. He used the words de de demon worshiping cult where they worshiped what is basically a high powered demon. He didn't call it a, a Satan. He didn't say, I'm not a, he's not a Satanist. He didn't, he said Satanists are like, do what thou wilt. He's like, that's not what we yeah. did. He's like, we worshiped a demon. And it did feed on blood. And he said that it was one of these things where you were given the option of becoming different types of, of beings. You could have an ability. He chose to be a werewolf, which he thought would be really cool until he realized what it was and what it entailed. The way he described it was like something that hitches a ride on your spine. 
and goes deep into the back of his skull and is always there monitoring and watching everything you do. He's like, whether you're taking a poop, whether you're talking to your girlfriend, it knows exactly what's going on at all times. It's really alien, really, is what it is. And then he said sure. that eventually it will assume the, the bestial form will take hold and that thing will assume control and then it will do whatever it is that it does. And at that time, it is essentially you that are kind of on the ride with it and you're watching as this thing has control of you and does whatever it's going to do. And you're just kind of there for the ride. It's just kind of holding you in place. And so... That that he went on to give me a bunch of other information that I'm like I said I'm going to talk about that story tomorrow on the show and he gave me the name of this entity that they were worshiping. Uh, don't really want to say its name. Starts with an M. And from what I looked up, oh, I it know is from Mesopotamia, but it's two letters off. Now, when I was talking to my wife about it, I said he's calling this thing uh, with an M. I said yep. he's calling it something, but but that's not correct. And she's like, well, why would it get, have a have it be two letters off? I said, because the demon's not going to give you its name, okay? Ever. They're not going to do that because that gives you some level of power and some level of control because you can go look it up and figure out what the hell it is. The closest I could come to was a Mesopotamian demon, which does do that and which is characterized by a bestial form. It can shapeshift into different things. And I have said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't think that these dogmen, all these creatures necessarily – are some sort of, uh, you know, ball of energy or an alien that can transform into that so much as some of these, these werewolf looking creatures. I think that they are that way. That is their true form. And they have the ability to change that form into other things, but that is their actual form. And I've said this before yeah. too. I'll say it again. I believe that it was given to them by possibly the Anunnaki as stargates, as keepers of the stargate. If something comes through, that's not supposed to be there. Um, then the dog takes care of it. That's kind of what it does. I think that that is a very plausible explanation for what is going on. But uh, Jason, you in your show, you have you have covered so many different things. Uh, you've covered ghosts, you've covered UFO, alien abduction, everything you could imagine. What is your thought on that? On the connection with these beings attaching themselves? And that is how the shape shifting actually takes place. It's not something that we as humans can do. It's something that this entity forces upon you when you give it permission. Have you heard? I mean, of this? Well, I, in a sense, I have in so many different ways. I mean, look at um, uh, Carl Castaneda's Don Juan. How they get into you know the mind altering stuff, but later on get into this whole, you know, basically becoming a um, a witch doctor in a sense to. Be, you know, transform yourself into a bird or whatever, you know, if you go back and then you, you talk about, you know, worshiping demons for blood. Well, God, all ancient, so many ancient religions were making blood sacrifices to their gods. And if those gods were aliens, what does that say about the aliens? <laughs> At least yeah. what they expected the aliens yeah. after they left wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the Mayans, uh, you know, the old Testament. I mean, you know, look, look, look at all the blood sacrificed. That that's not, doesn't say a lot good things about these entities. Well, you know, I mean, honestly, it's the fact of uh, if and I wouldn't say that the majority of cases deal with people having DNA taken or having stuff taken from them. But a number of them do at least a good third of them. Um, so if you're talking about these things are the gods of a society and. Whenever they come down, they take a certain number of people and they seem to take blood and other bodily fluids 100%. I think an uh, ancient society would totally misconstrue the fact that right. these things need blood because yeah. that's what they come and take. Yeah. You know? But the, but the whole indwelling thing, like, and, uh, of you know, I mean, if you look at any ritual practices, that is yeah. what you're doing. You're you're calling on an, a, a demon or something to indwell on you and become part of you yeah. or take over you. I mean, yeah. that is the process, you know. And I mean, going back to the ancient lores of werewolf, you know, wearing the skin of the wolf, you know, and absolutely all these. It's all it is is an indwelling yeah. of a of another entity or force inside of you to yeah. change. Yeah, even even the the Native American concept of drinking the water from a wolf. Yeah, print, wolf's footprint. You know, yeah, same, yeah, same thing. I mean, who do we know what we're you know when we when you get into consciousness and aliens and all you know other dimensions 
you know, we're, we're, you know the door is open for a lot of different possibilities here and you know yeah. who's to say how many aliens are really just traveling here through basically like the k-pack style you know like k-packs with <laughs> yeah. the awful kevin spacey you know but the idea <laughs> that you know they don't use ships to travel they use this you know taking over somebody's body they i think use, that's they use been, a vehicle yeah, yeah they use a container yeah. to travel in 100 percent. 100 percent. you know and and that's just it is that um the one thing i discuss regularly is the the connection of all this stuff to physics and quantum physics and the continued proof of that the continued proof i mean just uh, just quantum entanglement being proven to begin with um and what that means for everything from remote viewing to other psychical research to the concept of things living in a vibrational universe just outside of our reality you know um all all of that is right there when you start talking quantum entanglement and when you start talking modern physics and and where it's all taking us it's pretty right. fascinating if you take a look at like just in history of the rumors or the history of like the thal society and nazis they were doing channeling and a lot the, the 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 urban legend to it or maybe the truth of it is that they were getting alien technology through this channeling you know you know so we're, we're talking about alien alternate dimension beings or whatever giving information technology to nazis you know what I'm saying? If, so the the the, the if prevalence the ones to find that was channeling things from that was trust. Yeah, it right. Was Maria Orsich. <laughs> yeah, who yeah. was uh, yeah. she would go into a trance and she would write things, but when she wrote yeah. them, they were in some foreign language that somebody else had to decipher. Yeah, uh, I think it was in uh, cuneiform, but I'm not going to swear to it. At the end of the war, just before the soviets got into berlin her and all of her followers vanished mm -hmm. and you ever seen had, a picture of her yeah she is oh, yes, wow very, but she had told her followers it is time to go mm -hmm. to this planet they believed and in they, the vril yeah yeah so but yeah but that, she, that's uh, what i'm saying this is the beginning of the nazi yeah. party this is the beginning yeah. Uh, oh, what yeah. formed this between, and, between yeah. world war one and world war two it was unimaginable in germany because they were being blamed for everything went wrong even though austria started the war You're right so germany is going to have to pay for everything because yep. the, well politics any thought that there was a possibility of fixing the system was attacked with vigor because it was so bad they had nothing else to look for so it's like uh hey there's this funny little guy with a mustache the spewing rhetoric down at the beer hall oh let's go check him out you got a lot of yeah. young angry unemployed people a lot of old yeah. Yeah. unemployed uh, people uh, yeah yeah even, it's easy to get people motivated even jewish we scholars were pro-hitler up until well things turn south yeah yeah but that's just what i'm saying is that the effect of some unknown interdimensional entity channeling through through this little cult in germany leads to yeah. major world change yeah 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 for sure lots Absolutely. of death I, I gotta say something I'm, I'm a bit of a history nerd i guess but Hitler didn't start the Nazi movement. No. He, he nah, didn't. True. It was Otto and Gregor yeah. Strasser. Yeah. And he was yeah. actually, Hitler was hired by the uh, the Weimar Republic to spy yeah. on them. Mm -hmm. Which makes me order. wonder because... He was a mouthpiece. He's just like any yeah. you know any other politician you put up there. You know, and in a sense, he was just re really good at motivating the people and he became the forefront of the movement. Yeah, he was a secret police officer in the army because he was... Un unemployable anywhere else yeah and the guy that got him the position was a jewish colonel in the army well the whole thing is weird and we've gone down this rabbit hole before you and i chris james mm -hmm. <laughs> and it oh this is i can't do this right now let me, let me, let me like a 1877 um so so here here's what i can tell you he goes in 
he infiltrates this party from Otto and Gregor Strasser, these two brothers who eventually end up in exile in Canada and eventually are killed. Um, one of them, pretty pretty clear that he did commit suicide. The other one was murdered, of course. But what's crazy, though, is that Hitler, his mother was Jewish. And so him, by birth, he would be considered Jewish by birth. Yes. What's even weirder, right. and Chris James, we talked about this on the show one day when you were on, um, when they took Adolf Eichmann in for questioning, he started to stay on the stand in Israel. He goes, well, you know, he goes, we were in this together. And he was saying these outlandish things that they played it off like, oh, he's just trying to confuse. He even called himself a very devout Zionist and said that it was all part of the, the Zionist scheme. And he was a part of it. And even went on to say that him... Joseph Goebbels and Hitler, they were all Jewish. And it was very weird because the Krupps, one of the families that funded the war on both sides, get this, they have ties to the Bush family. Mm -hmm. They all got ties related. together. If you want to get down that rabbit hole, dear God. I mean, yeah. I mean, Hitler yeah. was related to the Rothschilds, if That's you can right. know that. That's, That's right. right. And then he yep. was, you know, and so the big question was is, did he just go rogue, or did he do what he was supposed to do? Or was this all part of some grand plan, you yes. know? Definitely because a grand plan. Grand plan, yeah, it, because it was all funded by – it was all set up. It was all set up. And, you know, and I, I hate hearing uh, – historically, I'm not judging you on this because you're, you're making a historical statement about the Zionist movement. You know, I, I'm a former Libertarian Party member, and right now one of the guys leading the Libertarian Party uses the Zionist – out there Zionist terms. I'm like, it goes way beyond that so much, yeah. you know. Oh, no. it, it, it's not it's not some no. Jewish conspiracy, okay? It, 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 it's it's big, rich families that happen to be Jewish yeah. background, okay? Or they don't give a crap about the them. Jewish religion. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they they don't have anything to do with it. It's a vessel, right? It's a vehicle, and there are six families in particular. And of course, a lot of people know that Gates. You know, he's part of the Rockefellers. I mean, each one of those families corresponds to a different you know, category. Um, the Oppenheimers were the science wing. The Krupps were the military wing. The Rothschilds were international finance. And you're right. They're, they're not even really Jewish. That's not even when you, no, you break yeah. it down. They don't have a drop of Hebrew, Hebrew blood. I mean, at all. That's not even, that, that has nothing to do with anything. What's crazy, though, is when you look at the people who were involved in those movements, Joseph Stalin was was there were 12 people they were all jewish he was the only one that wasn't but he managed to get into power and once he was done using the nkvd to wipe out most of the kulaks as they called them which were predominantly christian peasants then he turned on the jewish on the people Jews. and said okay yep. yeah i'm going to kill you now yep. because he looked at them as the opposition of course trotsky tried to escape and go wherever and he didn't get away but i promise you that Hitler was allowed to leave. He was allowed to go I into agree. exile in Argentina. Yep. He died in 1967. I believe that's that's the I real deal. Too. That's what happened. Yeah, I, I am not a I am not a believer of the bunker theory. No, yeah, no. no way. And I mean, then, it's been proven. It's been proven that that there's no way impossible that original skull mm -hmm. that the Russians said was you know the the skeletal remains yeah. were Hitler or not. There's they have already been proven they were not Hitler. So who uh, if that wasn't his body, where was his body there in the bunker? Yeah. Well, the whole story yeah. of Hitler committing like suicide. Like to see Bin Laden, too. Hitler's oh, yeah. Well, he was already dead. Another one. <laughs> yeah, Bin Laden, too. You could get into the whole conspiracy. Suddenly buried at sea. Uh, Joseph yeah. Stalin <laughs> believed that Churchill had Hitler on ice. And mm. Stalin mm. really wanted him bad because he'd offended him. He'd signed that treaty, and then he went against the treaty. And so Stalin kept bothering Churchill. And if you look at 90% of the photographs of the big three. Roosevelt is always sitting between Stalin and Churchill because yep, no. Churchill couldn't stand the guy. Yeah. So no, they trust. I mean, well, everything then reflects on what's happening now. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, Stalin kept hollering at Churchill, I want him. He belongs to me. He's mine. Stalin also wanted Franco because well, Franco, yeah. you know, obviously committed. Yeah. And, and that's a, there's another out. lie. 
if you go and you read release Soviet documents, which is it, people don't do this. They're, they're, ever since Perestroika, the wall, everything came yeah. down. Every year they release more and more documents since 10 years from that point, And they keep doing it every year. And the bombing of Dresden is, is there's huge documentation of what really happened and why they did what they did. When you go back and you look at the at the Soviet release documents, you can you can literally see exactly what happened. Franco was a big ally of Hitler, and and, and now we you know they're finding out that his mother was actually Sephardic Jewish, and so was, so was his opposition. So they were being funded and they were fighting against the left. They were considered a right wing party. Him and Hitler were friends. They did all of this together. And then he says, I can't help. I'm sorry. My, my country is in shambles because of the, of the Civil War. Thank you and Mussolini for the help. But it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed. I can't really do much. And it, but it was, though. Franco was smart. He knew he was surrounded by the French, the British, and God forbid if the Americans got involved, he was going to be in big trouble. He was surrounded. He was in the West at the, in the Iberian Peninsula. So he was stuck. He's like, I can't fight my way out of this. So he chose an alternate route, and he chose to allow his soldiers to volunteer, volunteer, which most of them, it's believed he sent them to the Eastern Front to fight uh, in the campaign against uh, Soviet Russia. So they were fighting in, in the East, in the Soviet Russia, in particular Army Groups B and A, and what ended up happening, a, a large number of them died at, at the siege of Stalingrad and Leningrad. Now, the, the numbers don't add up because they say that the Azul Division couldn't have been bigger than 40,000 soldiers. That's ridiculous because Stalin, till the day he died, and Khrushchev, his successor, said that Franco was responsible for the deaths of over 2 million Russian soldiers because of their, their staunch performance. In particular, at the Siege of Leningrad, they killed so many Soviets that he that Stalin till the day he died wanted Franco. He wanted him. He wanted revenge. And he knew that according to his estimates, he had sent almost half a million soldiers to the Eastern Front. Not the 40,000 that he was claiming in the Azul Division. That is not totally correct. And he used them in Liebstandarte, which is the SS division, which recruited heavily from da Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian uh, people. But yes. the Spaniards had an, a division, an SS division, and they, they did have a smaller unit attached to a pioneer division of the Vermont that was in the 6th Army. Um, and then, of course, SS Viking, which was another one that they had soldiers in. They also took part in the, in, in the Winter War, where they supported and supplied the Finnish, along with the Germans, <laughs> the Italians. And, of course, if you looked at the Spanish helmet, I used to I have got, one somewhere. I got poor, I, sorry, guys. I got Josh in a history tent. <laughs> you know, if you look at the Spanish helmet, it is exactly the same as the German yeah. helmet and the Finnish helmet. They were all the same yeah. helmet. You wouldn't know whether you were fighting a German, a Spaniard, yeah. or or a fin, the Finnish soldier. So that that right there, you know, it, it, it's it's very weird when you look at how it shook out and how it lined up, and then how what this has to do with UFOs. I can tie it in right now. I can tell you. There were different factions of these aliens, I still believe this, who were fighting on both sides. Yep. If you would look at the mm -hmm. siege of Troy, going way back into ancient history, these gods were on both sides. They were Apollo uh -huh. was fighting on one side. Um, you know, you had uh, 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 Ares fighting on another. Yeah. They were fighting against each other. They were, they were the Sumerian. Were, yeah, the Sumerian. Sumerian. I mean, yeah, it happened Ananaki, all the we're time. All fighting each other. Betas, it talks about the gods killing and destroying each other. And they were going full tilt, and they were using humans to do it. Now, I believe that Hitler thought that, and I believe that he actually had contact with these beings, too. And I, I think that he mm -hmm. thought they were going to back him up. Why not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And so, but there was on the other side. Now, look at Aleister Crowley. Him yep. and Jack Parsons and the other douchebag who write, writes, I'm not going to, I don't want to get sued, but the other guy that writes about ology. Um, let's just say those three hey, Ron, really. Ron, I'll say it. Well, you would say it on my show, but but I mean these three—not him. Okay, yeah. well, 
They'll still come after me and probably tell me to take it down. And I'm gonna get Josh Turner off. is not responsible for anything that his guests say on his show. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> so, so when you take those three guys, they, they could literally be responsible for what we know as the modern UFO era. The Lima, all this other stuff, everybody knows about that. Okay, so Aleister Crowley was actually recruited. He was asked, and he said, this is a matter of public record, that he helped the British to defeat yep. the Germans because he was using black magic to help them. And there were ceremonies that were done in the woods and all kinds of stuff. And they were doing everything they could to defeat the Germans. That was absolutely the number one goal was to do that. He and was also an active used, secret agent. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was to say, he was used as, they were using him as a spy within the, they, they felt there was the occult aspect of yeah. the, the the Nazis, the Nazi they wanted party. they wanted people within the the uh, you know these occult cycles like the Golden Dawn to the order infiltrate. Of mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, Madame Blavatsky, um, yep. which is is you know a lot of if people think that the swastika was used only in World War Two, no, it was used on German planes in World War One because there was already a movement within yeah. the German military, within the Wehrmacht, uh, to you know basically solidify. Uh, their connection to the white the white order of Thule. Thule being the mythical land that the Vikings had found, and there was this supposed prophecy that they would conquer the world and become the great Aryan Superman or whatever, which is really weird because they found this in the Indo-Aryan areas of the East. Well, they were in Tibet. Were in Tibet. I mean, Tibet. Were, yeah, they yeah. went to Tibet to find these, and then they looked for the Spear of Destiny, which was another thing. Um, so, so you had all these weird uh, uh, whatever, and I do believe that the elites, that what you were talking about, they don't care whether their their religion is supposed to be Jewish or not. It doesn't matter. They sacrificed their own people, their own their own supposed people, Jewish people, um, to this Holocaust. They, they wanted the, the elites wanted to happen because um, that's what the bombing of Dresden was too—to kill a quarter million of them. So that they could get a body count and they could use that. And so they sacrificed people, lots and lots of people, um, to this war. And I do believe that war was a huge, just a giant ceremony, like a huge sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I think that these beings that are in charge fed off of that, you know. They opened the gate. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it did kind of usher in the new UFO era. Because it was the first time that we had been up in the skies that heavily, and you had German, Soviet, um, you had you know everything you can think of the Japanese, the uh, the, the the British, the, the French, the Italians. Everybody was seeing these Foo Fighters. That's where that term, you know, Foo Fighters, and these Gremlins they were seeing up in the skies. And I believe that it was always there, but now we were up in the sky with them. And at times these. Uh, Pilots, they didn't know what they who they were fighting or what, and they would open fire on them. There was a story I got from a British guy who said his grandfather was literally he watched two Spitfires be shot down by these Foo Fighters because they didn't know that they who they were. They believed it was Nazis was with wow, secret yeah. technology, yeah. you know, or which is a possibility. There's stories from Vietnam like sure. that as well, where they're going mm -hmm. up the channels and they shot rockets at a UFO, and it was there. The rockets disappeared, and it basically, you know, like bazooka-style round rockets off one of the uh, ships that they had going up and down the canals. And then a week later, they found a, uh, I believe it was a, a, a battleship, was hit once they saw the same UFO by those same missiles. They found shrapnel that, that was coded for the United States. So either our own troops were firing at these specific battle you know these battle cruisers or the ufo itself was firing them back i think it's a british destroyer was it yeah it yeah. was a small ship it wasn't a battleship they couldn't get those up those rivers well a no battle, they had they had a they, battleship is a deep ocean right but from from the uh it was like a it was that was a uh what like a pontoon riverboat that that shot? Yeah, like a like and a. And then it turned boat. around and, uh, and attacked a river the battleship boat, with it. A riverboat fired the missiles. Right. And then later the missiles were fired. I believe at a British <laughs> destroyer. Right. It was a smaller uh, vessel, but it still killed three or four of the the sailors on board. I think mm -hmm. it was like three or four hits, like yeah. direct hits, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's yeah. a wild story. I mean, think about that kind of encounter, and that's manipulating. Well, I mean, no, no and... different, no different than the stories of Malmstrom Air Force Base and others, yeah. where where things were not necessarily overtaken but shut down. Right. Go back all the way to Alexander yeah. the Great. Yep. I mean, he had, uh, you yeah. know, was it was he was he invading it? Was it Instable? Instable? I can't remember. What he was invading, uh, but they had, you know, he reports that they had two silver discs in the sky diving towards his troops, scaring the elephants, and you know, basically, yeah. an inter- they had to turn back, so affecting an outcome of a battle two thousand years ago. Are you mm. talking about the Indus Valley when Porus? He was with Porus, and they. I think so. Yeah, if I remember yeah. right. That, that that was that was after they had achieved their first uh, they had de- de- defeated the first province that they fought in the Indus Valley and then Porus became one of his generals and they went on to fight about three or four more pitched battles with these uh, tribes going into India and eventually um, which, it, it, would, it would still it would be like Pakistan whatever is where they were at modern yeah. Pakistan but then they were going into India and. Eventually, they just they were they, they kind of mutinied, friendly, and said we're not going to go any further. We're done. We're tired, and we want to go home. We haven't been home in eleven years. What's left of the Macedonian slash Greek army? Um, one of the things too is interesting: the supply lines that, that they that were they were being reinforced and reinvested by Greeks that were once the Greeks realized that Alexander's campaign was fruitful and they were getting boxes of treasure being sent back to Athens. They were like, oh, okay, now we'll commit people. And so they were shipping Greeks back in to fill the ranks of the phalanx, which was decimated down to about 18,000, I believe, with the original 44,000. And they were being filled by hoplites who were not used to fighting with, and they had to be trained. And so the army became more and more Persian. And as the Hellenistic culture began to meld with the culture of the Persians, even back then, one of the oldest religions, Zoroastrian, was, was, was taking hold. And I believe Alexander began to adopt some of the Persian gods, which was another thing that stuck in the craw of the Greeks, in particular the new guys coming in that weren't really Macedonian. <clears throat> Because the Macedonians didn't adhere to the gods of the Greeks so much as like the, the Spartans, uh, the Thebans, the, the the Argosians, and all that. They they were not as as Greek. They were more. They were a mixture of Greek and Slavic. So what happened was um, they were reporting back that Alexander was starting to become more Persian, and he was starting to believe more like them. And it was reported that he was starting to um, believe himself to be a god. And one of the problems with that was that he was starting to connect with these beings or talking with these beings, which which he said were the gods, and that they were telling him to do this and telling him to do that. And the imagination runs wild. I believe wild. He, really, he believed he was um, real, uh, a descendant of the god Marduk. I yep. think it was. From the, yeah, uh, there was there was talk of, of the Sumerian yeah. because he made it. It's just this is a weird thing. That he was it's Nephilim, basically. Like, Nephilim, you know, yeah, and he, and he made it back to Babylon to die. And the there was a prophecy there, and it's known to this day by the Iraqis that whoever was to to cut that knot, the Gordian knot, would become the master of Asia, but they would die in Babylon. There was no way that you could not die in Babylon. No matter how far away you go, you will have to come back if you desecrate the temples of the gods of Samaria, which were found in Babylon, which Alexander, being a young and brash guy, and the Babylonians pissed him off. He went in there and he says, you're going to tell me I can't go into your temple. And they said, yes, you're, you're basically a barbarian. He had the two guards at the front slain, who they claimed were, by by today's measures, eight feet, nine feet tall. They were considered to be uh, the most powerful men Nephilim. in Babylon, yeah. which were <laughs> Nephilim, and they were killed. Then he walked into the temple, and he knocked over the incense, and they killed the priest, and they desecrated the temple. Then he went into the, the background of the holy, holy, whatever, and he went into the area where there was a huge knot that was supposedly tied by giants. There was no way that that thing could have sat there for thousands of years and nobody could untie it because 
it was untieable because it was it was tied by giants. He takes out his sword, he cuts it, and then that's it. He fulfills the prophecy to become the master of Asia, which we know he actually did not ever become a master of Asia because he didn't. He never even got to China. <laughs> um, but but he did kick a lot of ass, and he was never yeah. defeated. He was. But it just shows you there's somebody who thought maybe that they were descended from alien gods and yeah, how much yeah. control and power and what they did look at today i mean you you see it yeah. in you know i mean i mean look uh even saddam hussein thought he was what nebuchadnezzar or something like that i can't yes, remember yeah. Yep, yep. you know i'm just saying i'm just saying that the, the, these these alien forces going all the way back to the anunnaki if they're still in control are using elite top people uh, they, they could be their descendants in some sense closer to them bloodline wise to do their bidding and they are manipulating all the wars on different sides or different alien mm -hmm. factions have their one this is our group of people here and the other alien factions has this group of people they control more of this the the german government while this one controls more of the american government or vice versa we don't know we don't know yeah but the, the thing is is there's definitely uh if you look at the elites you look at the what they talk about secret societies all their symbolism, all their stuff goes back to ancient Mesopotamia and Babylonian religions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild. Yep. De definitely. Every time you look at any of these um, beings, you know, they're always meddling in the affairs of men. Now, somebody asked me what they wanted. And I said, originally, what they wanted was resources, in particular gold. Uh, gold is a strong conductor. It's a purification metal. It's also been something that's been lusted after for humans for thousands of years. And some of the people in this group that I was in, they had no idea just how much gold there was on the earth. And they said, well, isn't there like gold everywhere? I said, no, there's gold that's alloy, like 14 karat, like what I'm wearing, or 10. And, and then there's pure gold. Now, 24 karat gold is very rare. If you take all of the gold that we have, that we know of, that exists on the planet right now, it would fill a roughly a little larger than a tennis court, a, about 33 feet high. Yeah. None of which came from Earth. No, nope. you're right. Exactly. Absolutely. And so probably with something um, that struck the Earth at one point in time, and maybe some things that happened multiple times. and so Possibly we, hurled at Earth. Hurled at Earth, it. even. Yeah, there was... <laughs> Exactly. There is a whole bunch of theories about that. But when I said that, these people were like, well, I see people wearing gold all the time. And I'm like, you're missing the point of alloy right. um, because yeah. gold is very expensive and it's very soft and people don't understand that. And why did all of the emperors of every civilization that we know of that have all around the world always wore gold? They always wore gold because gold was the status that said that I am a powerful being, whatever. And they saw the they, gods had it on. Too. The, yeah. The, the like gods wanted metal. it, so it must be worth worth something, mm -hmm. right? The, the incorruptible. Mm -hmm. Right. And the only metal, really, that is that way, um, when you look at platinum or silver or any of these other metals, mm -hmm. they all have that same color. There's a bunch of them that look that color, that look like silver, um, but not a lot of metal. Steel is it can be polished yeah. to look like silver. But gold is very unique. It's not the same. And, of course, you know, if, if Sitchin's, Sitchin's work is to be believed, they were looking for gold because of their atmosphere. Now, I don't know about that. I don't know how that would work. Atmosphere but I do know filter. And it's it was supposed to be looked at by NASA as well. They, uh, yeah. yeah. The, back when global warming was the big thing, yeah. they wanted to get their hands on mm -hmm. some gold powder it and release it in the atmosphere yeah so and then electrical charge now you just have bill gates fields. saying he wants to block out the sun completely you know that's he wants true. to get highlander <laughs> two on us that's, that's true exactly. he wants to build meat in a lab and he wants to block the sun out they want to and we should all eat bugs and we should all eat yeah. each other he watched he highlander two and thought like hey that's a great idea he wants yeah. us to look like the grays black eyed big heads really pale skin all that good stuff you know i won't be so weird here when i talk you know, Bill Gates, you know. you're, you're the guest tonight. Let me ask you a question here, um, and, and get, let me get this. I, I already kind of know what the other three guys believe, but what do you believe about the king of the world, supposedly the big lizard that lives inside the world? What do you believe of that? What do you think of that? <laughs> it, throw it in the bucket of all the other ideas I've had. I don't know. You know, it's, I, 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 
I, I think, you know, you hear stories of, the, of reptilians, you hear stories of, you know, you look back in the ancient cultures and the fascinations with dragons, like, for all cross cultures. I think Yahweh was a dragon. I love that about Paul Anthony. Well, he talks about, you know, saying like, the, you know, look at the, the mythology of the dragon. It, 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 you know, it, it needs virgin sacrifice. It needs gold, you know, yeah. it, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a Lord or God over its people. You know, we've had a fascination with something of reptilian nature, and snakes scare the crap out of me. So, part big part of me hopes it is not real at all. That there are no why, reptilians or whatever. Why did it yeah. have to be snakes? Right. <laughs> why did it have to be snakes? You know, that's the thing. But if if when it comes down to it, we if you look at the Zachary Stitchin and you get in the Sumerian text, you get into all that. It seems like there was an alien race, maybe the Anunnaki or whoever came here, maybe messed with our DNA, turned us into little workers to mine gold or whatever, but eventually their operation stopped or fell apart. Did they go away? Or did another alien force come in and say, what the hell have you guys done to this planet? You know, like yeah. like coming in, like a government coming in and say, what did you do to this? this? This should be a natural preserve. And maybe they've stepped in. And maybe that's why we don't have Anunnaki rulers anymore. Maybe there's some other mm -hmm. force here now, and this is where we're getting all this kind of, you know, different manipulation happening in our governments from different alien forces because there's some kind of power struggle who really controls this planet. And maybe there's a good force that has like a prime directive that says, stop messing with the humans, stop pretending you're gods to them, you know, they need to develop on their own, and then they're secretly, you know, sneaking in and, and, and screwing stuff up still, you know, best idea I have on, on the whole, mm -hmm. if I were to sum it up. And, and, the, and when David talks about Yahweh, when he cries out to Yahweh and Yahweh appears, he describes Yahweh. Now, it's really weird. And when I tell people that the Old Testament contradicts itself, they get really, really aggravated. They don't like to hear that. They're like, no, it's not. No, it's perfect. It's this, that. Look, oh. if that's the case, then why did David describe God? They said that no one had ever seen God, but they say that Yahweh is God, according to the Old Testament. But they also say they didn't, they didn't know his name. They didn't know his name. When Moses asked him on the mountain, what do I tell the people who you are? I'm Yahweh. And that is, I, you know, they paste Yahweh on man. everything before that. Yeah. He yeah. gives like a very flippant answer. I am, I am you know, like, yeah. you know, it gives a very like yeah. jerk answer to Moses there. But it just shows that even after they were supposed to know who Yahweh was, you go back to the, old, the Genesis, you know, right. you get Yahweh there, but you don't get... You, Moses doesn't know who he's talking to when he gets to the mountain. He doesn't know right away that it's Yahweh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and then of course it, with with Abraham and the Sarawati story, um, of course they turned it into a story that was more from the West, and it's not. Um, it's a story that goes way back to Samaria, and it's known all the way to India and Persia and everywhere else, and all over the Levant, um, and and. When, when they're they're asked, when when Abraham is asked who he's going to serve, he says, "Are you going to serve the powerful ones by the Euphrates? Are you going to serve me?" He's asking him that. I mean, that's like when you go into these texts that are not in the Bible too. That that is another thing. And people say, "Well, we should just ignore that. We should leave it out." And then I was watching a show today. Um, who I had never seen this guy's podcast before. And I'll probably never watch it again. But he had this lunatic on there who had a pilgrim hat. I, dude, I don't even get me started on that guy. I don't know, but he was talking about everything that the Catholic Bible was completely. I'm not Catholic, but he. But I, I hate when people, you know, twist and turn when it comes to religion, and and then flat out lie. He was lying mm. about the Catholic faith and saying that they were trying to say that the world that Jesus had come back in AD seventy, and that it was all this. Well, you know, the thing was they were trying to say that Nero Caesar with the numbers of his name it was the antichrist it was the antichrist because 666 spells his name and that would have been a contemporary but they said no 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 it, 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 it did it, we're known that the, under the emperor uh domitian uh, uh, that that it was you know supposedly or he kept calling him domitian or whatever he kept calling him but he said that that is known that it was in 96 to 97 AD, which I don't believe there is. I mean, that's me. I don't, I just, I'm looking at the date and I'm like, we have no way to know. We really don't. All we have is what later people say, these anecdotes that they have. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the evidence, there is, I mean, yeah, uh, there was predernism, you know, and they, and they were having a big old discussion about it. And this pilgrim had a goofball who was 
basically hated Catholics. And I'm like, anytime you get somebody whose view is slanted against one religion or one type of religion or another, they're going to put out their propaganda. And that's what he did. And so then I thought about it and I was like, this guy has no idea. I mean, there's a reason why the Torah is not the Pentateuch. I mean, you know, it's two different yeah. things because it is our version of the Torah that we follow and a Greek, whatever. And then these people, they take it and go, well, this is the word of God. And you're like, that is the Schofield King James version, which to me is the most unreliable of all the books. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. And then well, they say, I mean, well, well, you got all these weird books in the Catholic, like Tobol and Tobit. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the you do the, but one, the ones that were actively removed by Martin Luther right. and stuff Martin like Lee, that yes, in the, in the second purge of the exactly. Bible. The first, I mean, I don't. Maybe it's because I'm a former Catholic seminarian. That's right, um, you are Catholic, and act, yeah. actively know church history pretty I darn was raised Catholic well. Too. It's wild um, what yeah. they've done. I was baptized. Yeah, as a Catholic you don't learn a lot Baptist. of church history as a Catholic. Nope. Um, <laughs> not not nope. generally. And, no. and yeah, like the the whole the whole concept of the parousia and the second coming. Uh, I mean, that's why the that's why the gospels were written when they were written to begin with, and not actively as things happened. They were written about seventy years later because these dudes were like eighty, um, and somebody had to write down their stories. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they were attributed to the people. John didn't write that story. Um, that's like saying that Plato wrote his work. No, no, no. It was written by his student and attributed to Plato. That's how things worked and in the ancient world. And his student was Aristotle, um, and Aristotle was the teacher. That, of is, that, is, that is exactly it. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the same thing happened. There were, when it came time uh, to fight Arianism, that was, that was uh, the time of the first church council, uh, the Council of Nicaea, where we donned the Nicene Creed. Uh, the Nicene Creed was actively written to go against Arianism, which was saying that the Trinity was not individual, but it was one God with three faces, and whichever one you needed, he put that face on, which the Trinity in, in and of itself in Catholic teaching is three independent things, not one thing with three faces. So <clears throat> they had to go through and rapidly solidify that because at the time christianity and catholicism even were still very sectarian and the people in ethiopia and that church were not reading the same thing as the church in mycia who were not reading the same thing as the church in rome who were not reading the same thing as the church in ephesus all that kind of stuff so it was like we need to come up with a cohesive story here guys how many people are reading the gospel of mary magdalene eight of you awesome that one's out. Well, gone. Yeah. yeah. That one's Look out. Look Because oh, God. The, the greater majority <laughs> yeah. of us are not reading it, and it's time to conglomerate this thing into a story. It's time for yeah. us to decide what we're actually about, because now we have Arianism challenging the faith. Um, and that's it, it, where the first purge of books came from. That's a, But to, to their credit, um, the, the New Jerusalem Bible and the New American Bible are the only Bibles out there that actively use the original Coptic, that actively use the original Greek, that actually use the original Hebrew for all of their translation. Yeah, and they and, do not depend on Latin translation. They do not depend on the translation of a translation. They use the actual original language. Yeah, and, and when you go back and you read from these books that are translated correctly, like when it says that the meek will inherit the earth, that is actually not meaning that meek, little limp-wristed, weak people no. are going to inherit the earth. That <laughs> yeah, is yeah. a type of war horse that was yeah. used by the Greeks, yeah. And it was more akin to Polish hussar horses than somebody going like, well, I'm just very passive. And and so people will, will use that. They'll say, remember, like when I was in this war with these people, they... That people were messaging me and giving well, me that passage, and they were like, "Remember, Jesus says that the meek will inherit the earth." And I'm like, "So then I should be a war horse? Well, even no, war even, horse because that even, means I will inherit the earth." I thought even, it was Meek Mills the rapper. But. Even the common, <laughs> even the common misconception of uh, Elohim that God's words yes. to yeah. to Moses, mm -hmm. "I am who am." When you take that mystically, 
And when you go back into the world of Kabbalah, which all that ties <laughs> from, the original concept of Kabbalah and the fact that every letter is a number, every number has a meaning, the prime basic teaching of Kabbalah is that no number exists without the number one, who is. Mm -hmm. So when he said, I am who am, that means you can go tell the mystics, you could go tell whoever, but they'll know I am who am. Because the high priest will understand I am who am before the common people will understand I am who am because of the teachings of Kabbalah. Yeah, and, and the Kabbalah is another interesting one, and I believe that it makes references to what can be construed um, or maybe misconstrued, I don't know, it depends on how you look at it, of what aliens slash demons, because it talks about them. It gives you sure. actually an explanation that they are beings, compressed mm -hmm. beings from another universe, which yeah. is very odd. And then when you're sitting there reading that, you're going like, they Not were compressed? Like how? But no, no, no. It is an odd passage. But when you start to go back and you look at what it is, the interpretations are actually limitless because to me, yes. it could be the Denisovians. We find that their teeth and we found their bones and most of them have been compressed by water, which makes me wonder if they were not the giants that were destroyed by the flood. These were antediluvian race of beings sure. and they were compressed. And sure. now, according to the Book of Enoch, they roam the earth as evil spirits for all time until the day of judgment. So if you were to look at those as the possible candidate, it, it, the, the answer is there in the Kabbalah. Well, or yeah. is it an actual universe that was crushed upon itself and we were spun off from it? And these beings, the reason that they look anthropomorphic, is it really because they're the disembodied spirits of some sort of uh, genetic mutations created well, by the Anunnaki? Or alien or, races. And yeah, we or they just alien alien races. period. Yeah. We tend to turn it into human understanding, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, much yeah. like the idea of any alien race must be you know, must Humanoid. be horribly advanced and and totally peace wanting. No, we <laughs> want to be horribly advanced yeah, and man. totally peace wanting. Oh, that man. does not mean that the alien species is the same way. That no. does not mean that whatsoever. I mean, if you believe in the ancient alien theory and everything when it comes from the India and Samaria and all that, obviously they are not very perfect. They're all yeah. fighting each other and fighting for yeah. power. Yeah, not yeah, very yeah. peaceful. Which leads yeah. us to the Gnostic view that the Demiurge was actually very, you know, yeah. not perfect, um, b believing sort of a toddler in a way. It was like it was left by its parents to kind of raise itself. Like and, AI, so, maybe. A mm. Yeah. When you stop Good and you think call. about it, though, it could have, you know, it makes it sound like, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, funny, or silly. It makes it sound like an angry teenager that's a latchkey kid that was left behind. Sure. Yeah, and that he's Very he's true. ignorant. He's not evil, but he's really ignorant. He's got too much yeah. power, and he's his parents were divine gods. He's a jealous so, god. He's yeah, got his own so agenda. He creates too. this world that is not a perfect world. So say yeah. the guy sits down on a computer and he creates a world for himself because he's alone one afternoon while yeah. his mom and dad are at work, and he creates us, and he creates this yeah. virtual simulation that we're living in, and it sets himself up as, look, I'm well, God in this world. I can do whatever I want. Um, and, and, and that in and of itself is the, the greatest conundrum of all, yep. Wolf, is, is it all a simulation, period? Are we in the Matrix? Are, are we yeah. uh, not, even, not even in the Matrix? You know, because that would presuppose something. But, but the fact of it being an agreed-upon illusion you know, much yeah. much like the concept, uh, the Aristotelian concept of perfection um, and, and the whole idea that out there somewhere in the universe is is the perfect concept of hard drive. It never corrupts. It never, never goes bad. The data never goes bad on it. It, it can be read for all eternity. However, we as corruptible um we'll never attain that perfection we will always have something just substandard from the perfection 
because we are corporeal, because we do not take part in that ether in that way. We may be able to create, but we will never be able to attain the perfection of that, so to speak. Um, and Perhaps yeah. we alleviate ourselves with the container. That that's just it. That's just it. And even even alleviate your mind of the concept of the container. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and the idea of yeah, um, the table you're touching by all by all ninth grade physics is not there. Yeah, the chair you're I sitting in by all ninth grade physics is not there. It is an assemblage of atoms which are 90% empty space and you are feeling a magnetic repulsion of electron fields. This is sounding like a Buckaroo Banzai episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've always I been haunted. I, I've always been haunted a little bit. I've told this story on my show is my uh, grandfather had dementia. Mm. The last two years of his life, he didn't speak a single word. Oh, wow. And the day he died, my aunt rolled him up to this window. She would, he would always want to look out. You know, she would just let him look out, see the nature and all that. But he never talked. But he suddenly laughed and goes, life's a joke. And then a couple hours later, he died. And that's haunted me ever since. Like, wow. You know, his final vision, the moments before he died, he said, life's a joke and laughed. You know, he, yeah. he, that man went from, you know, you know, through alcoholism and family torn apart, all this horrible things that went through house burning down. Like, he had a pretty tough life. Yeah. And, and his last words, life's a joke and laugh, you know. That makes me wonder what is what is, is this a simulation? Is this you know just some play of you know I'm going to be the bad guy, you're going to be the good guy. Let's go, let's go live well, a, a life. It, 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 yeah, know. yeah, no, absolutely. And so it's kind of like the meme picture that I just saw recently, where it's like the only person who'll ever remember the two hours extra you work this week at work is your kid. Um, they, your boss ain't going to remember it or appreciate yeah. it. You probably won't remember the two hours that you lost, but your kid will definitely remember the fact that, man, I got two hours less with dad this week, you know, and we, we live in a hugely fast society, man. Like our, uh, our brains are meant to be sieves and it doesn't matter how big the sieve is or how big the holes are when there is too much water going into it too fast, it cannot do its job. You know? you know, Jason, Doc Holliday's last words were, this is funny, and then he yeah. died. Um, really? When you, yeah, it's it's yeah. a really weird thing. Like, there have been many people who've died laughing just looking at this, like, you know, um, it was said, and I don't know if it's true, but there was it was rumored that that Augustus Caesar, when he died, like, he was like, did I do my job on this, on this wonderful play? And then he died. Um, there were a lot of people who have died – kind of like kind of in a laughter state of whatever, you know, and, and it, it's uh it's a very odd thing. It makes you wonder what this all is and what it all means, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and how what the matrix is. I've had a lot of people tell me through near death experiences and alien abduction scenario that they've seen this honeycomb pattern around them and they've been up to it and they've seen it light up in an orange way or a green way. Mm it's it's uh it's very odd it's very weird one of the weird stories i got from somebody was from england it was a guy who he fell asleep in class and he woke up in a lab setting inside of what looked like a plastic pod with a with a uh some sort of uh not not like a, a what do you call that uh where it's like very soft like um i forgot the material what it's called but he said it looked so, like when you pack stuff in and it's like this egg crate looking material. Mm. And he said it was like a pod and they he went, was panicking and it opened up and he looked at himself and he was like a, he had, he was a white guy in, in his life in this life, but he was very Brown and he was obviously female. And she, he began to ask what's going on and started pulling all this stuff yeah. off of his head. And these humans, every humans came running up to him or her and started telling her, "Oh, calm down, calm down. You're fine. You're fine. You're gonna go back under. We're just, we're, we're not done yet." And they put him back. And then he wakes mm. up. He's back in class, and he was like, "Whoa, did I just dream that I was some like Indian girl yeah. from India? Was Why? that me? Like, what was that?" Yeah, you know? that's like the Matrix, 
right? Yeah. And, well, and even yeah, people yeah. are laughing at the end and, because they see that we take our whole lives and fear that moment, that moment of death. And right before it's given to us, we're, we get that glimpse past that veil and we see that it's not the end. So people are like, ha, all this time, right? I guess it's on to the next, you know, the next uh, adventure or, you know, the next stage of whatever this is. Or they, I, I, I my, one of my favorite, uh, there's a Rick and Morty episode where it's yeah. like you have this David Let's Busters in space. I love it. Yeah, uh, and uh, and uh, there's yeah. this this game called Roy. The video game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember that? And so, <laughs> you know, you know, Morty puts on the helmet, and you know, like next thing you know, he's Roy as a little being born, and he lives like this whole life, and then yeah. beats cancer, and then ends up dying with something falling on him, and then Rick's like, "I'll beat your." <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, I'll be but basically they wake up they wait they live this whole expanse of life in this matter of minutes and wake up and it was all just a game yeah yeah and then in, on that well, episode i remember he says i knew you were just gonna t die and stay in that carpet store or whatever it was it was like yeah. a drug store or whatever yeah. he's like i knew you were gonna do that you loser you know you uh, take the, chances uh, or do anything that, with yourself. that's right out of the movie jacob's ladder yeah right yeah, yeah. another but, another story like that Unfortunately, yeah. guys, I've got to head out. So I should get going here. Been soon more too. than a pleasure, but uh, I've I've got crazy early meetings with clients via the internet. For sure. Okay, I'll let you yeah. run, Jordan. Take care, right. guys. Pleasure as night. always. Thanks it was really nice meeting you. In. Hey, you too. Yeah. More than a pleasure, Jason. Take care. See y'all soon. All right. And I should get going because I got lost. We're losing an hour of time tonight for you guys. To remember, we got to oh, spring yeah. forward. That's so are you, are you still? That is the biggest the con. retail thing, Jason? Or yeah. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time. Dude, you, if you tomorrow. just get on YouTube and just do what you do, like what you do, and just focus on that and put and, and, and watered it, you know, do a little more with it. I'm, I'm positive that you could do a whole lot with that. You, you could have a really good channel, a bigger channel. And probably make pretty decent money, and eventually not have to do with that. You know. Yeah, right now I don't make any money. I, I make an, just enough through Patreon and little donations on YouTube and some, you know, views, whatever, to uh, pay the bills of the show. <laughs> so it ain't gonna pay my bills that I'm the main, main breadwinner here in the household. So not yet. But uh, as my kids get older and I get more free time, I plan on investing more and doing more on the show. I, I've been doing some stuff to edit the channel. I am putting by suggestion by people on their comments uh, more of a title in the in the show description so you know more what the show is about i would always just put guest names on i'm changing stuff i'm trying to improve stuff i might expand do more stuff in the future right now it's just basically work 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 kids 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 and then my show on sunday <laughs> that's what yeah. it's like you should you come know. onto my channel as well we can get you on my channel yeah definitely you know, cross definitely. community and really really I'd definitely get you guys i'd love to have any of you guys on my show to talk more about this i could definitely talk all night about it but oh, like too. i said i'll be i'll be dragging butt tomorrow trying to be like hi how can i help you <laughs> you know yeah it doesn't work very well helping customers that way i so, think jason hey. you and rob would do, would be a great collaboration that's why i was glad that you were able to make it today rob because i wanted you to meet jason i think you guys would do really well together on, on a show if you guys uh Got on each other's show and 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 rob is a wealth of, of knowledge information about this he knows all about he's on the level i mean there's a lot of people in this field that i deal with but there's only so many people that are on the level where that we are you know, you know this isn't talking Thank down you. to anybody but to really be on that level and know what you know what's what you know and be able to talk about all these things whether you know and it traverses a, a multitude of subjects and we could talk about it all night long, like you said. But that is that is something, though. Jason, I think you and Rob, if you and, and Chris, of all y'all, if you just invested a little more time into this, if you had the time. But like me, I don't uh, sleep a lot. I don't. I can function with four or five hours of sleep a day, and I've been doing it for years. But um, a lot Same. of people though they can't do that, you know. And then, but if you if you really were to get in there and start pushing, and like the the, the push that we made recently, you know. Um, we're doing more uh, subscribers and everything than we've ever done. It's blowing up, and we've done it all legit. No fake buying anything. You know, it's all been straight up numbers. And you know, we do do a lot of work, but it is worth it because it's now paying off. <clears throat> and when you get to a certain point, um, like if I go to someone's show, my 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 audience, 
they're right there. I mean, the, the paratroopers, they'll show up wherever I go, whatever channel I go to, whoever show I'm on, they're going to show up. And, and I, I, I always say that my fans travel well. And I used to not like to call them fans. I used to call them listeners, but I really do have fans and, and they really have helped me um, when we were under attack, you know, this last few months, you know, and, and we, my fans, you know, closed ranks rallied around me and we're growing and doing more bigger and better things than we've ever done. I'll have two more books out by the end of the year. And so, you know, everything we've touched has done really well. Paranormal sound table, the music you heard earlier, the first song was uh, the flying Dutchman. The second song was the bear King based on legends and stories from the show. Bear King. And so, awesome. yeah. So we just keep moving, keep pushing. But Jason, definitely, I'd like to get you on again. You and I did a, a, a series of recordings, like three episodes. And I'd like to have you again to, to, to record with so that we could talk more about this subject. And what I would like to do is a, is a series of pre-records with you. So, Yeah, definitely. Sure. Definitely. Let me know what you said. You had some future with, uh, you know, trying to make a, it sounds like you're trying to make a network. Yeah, Paranormal well, in a sense, you know, it, it's it's syndication, and it's it's basically like you get a, 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 a slot, and then we're going to be able to use a, a studio that's going to be a lot bigger and more powerful than what I got. You can even do it in front of a live studio, um, and then you can take uh, other podcasters and YouTubers, and we can put them on there. The meeting will happen not this week. Uh, it'll be next weekend after South by Southwest and all these lunatics leave Austin. Then I can <laughs> get back to doing what I do. And, and uh, I would like to have certain people come on. I think the exposure would be big for you guys. And it's only going to get better because um, we're reaching more and more people. And, of course, the show is growing. Just on YouTube now, we have 32,000. And I, I don't know if we crossed over yet, but it's like 32,000. All too, too shy of 32,500. And nice. we're doing 1.4 thousand subscribers every 28 days. That's and awesome. So, yeah, so we're moving, and, and, and the views, we get the views. I, I think, like, a couple of our last videos got, like, 24,000 views, and one of them got, like, 18,000 views. Um, so it's it's growing. And, and so there are people in this field that we need more of. You guys are the people that need to be out there, along with people like Tex uh, from his uh, Texas Front Porch, uh, his channel. And then you got guys like Matt Imps from 412, Barton Nunley, uh, and his channel. And, and of I'd like course, to give a uh, shout out to Jamie and Rob, too, who have Weird Wednesdays. You should check it out. Weird oh, Wednesdays, yeah. 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Jamie, uh, yeah, definitely. It, it, all these people, BMR, he's a good guy, Blondes and Booze. Um, you know, crypt, uh, crypto normal encounters with Bettina Maz. These are the people who do real work. They don't use fake numbers. They don't. They don't have fake generated AI bullshit stories. And they, they're real people like you guys. Got to get all these people together and create yeah. that community, and then mm -hmm. we can take on those so-called, you know, the ones that do that AI kind of stuff and the ones that are just spouting nonsense and you don't have yeah, to take them on. Well, you just have to make better. Con you just make well, exactly. you your content you know, out there. That's we, better. We start to, we start to line up with, with the people that really, really vibe with us, I guess is the best way yeah. to say it. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I want that, you know, and it has nothing to do with control or anything else. All I want to do is get the information out there and to have yeah. it clean, correct and get people who have a brain. Because you, you, you know, David Wedley, great friend of mine, actually doesn't, you know, Jordan lives that way. David lives that way. Um, David says that, you know, he's like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. There's a lot of people out there that shouldn't. They shouldn't be writing books because their books, are, they suck. They don't know about punctuation or spelling or anything else. And then there's people doing podcasts and YouTube. And oh, my gosh, they actually have people that will listen, real people that will go in their chat and be like, hey, I love it here. And you're like, you have never eaten anything good. If all you've ever had is a cracker, like Eddie Murphy said, and then you eat a rich, you're going to be like, oh, my God, what is that? You know, you're going to be freaking out because it's a delicious. And they never listen to Art Bell. <laughs> yeah. They've never heard what's, uh, what is a good YouTuber podcast, and I think you guys are. And eventually, I think that the – Cream rises to the top, and I think that Jason, you, Rob, Chris, y'all will find if you just keep putting out material, 
and put it different time slots maybe on YouTube um, and just focus on that YouTube for a while. You know, the podcast is good. It's okay. I make money off of Spotify and a few others and I get some exposure, whatever, but it's not, it's not what it could be. And I, I just kind of started focusing on YouTube and really pushing the live streams and everything else and bringing people together. The conference is really big, bringing people yeah. together. The, the collaborations that come out of those conferences. And I'm telling you, you guys, with what you have, the, the intelligent brains of you guys, man, you could do a lot of great things. And with the information y'all have, I would love to see Rob, you and Jason work together and, and see what you could come up with because two of the smartest guys in this field, man, and, and Chris, James, you've been a, a really good guy, good ally, and 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 being here every Friday with me to, to interview everybody. Um, it's been a good Friday. show, and I'm glad that you could make it. Good and uh, I would like to, I would like to get uh, do a show where we could get Paul Wallace on too. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah. I love. I had Paul. talked to Paul about about interviewing him, and he had said that he was open to doing another interview. But I just got so busy. I got so damn busy with. Everything. I'm going to have him on the show soon too, and I can talk to him about coming on for a panel talk. He and yeah, tell also, him, let him know because yeah, we've talked, you know, and there's so many different people I've talked to about doing this. And Jason, I'll throw you the link anytime you want to come on. We do this every Saturday. So if you want to start yeah, it depends on my retail day. Saturday yeah. <laughs> schedule. I work, I work a lot of late night Saturdays. When you said this Saturday, it's like, woohoo, I get off at five. Yay. Yeah. And then my wife's like, we have dinner with family. I'm like, okay, what time? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, ran, home to, I yeah. ran home today like that. I was like, oh, I'm going yeah. out of late. Boom. I'm and glad I came to home. hear. I actually I'm left early work, work too. I'm I, I, not, I said, I lose an hour of time today. You know, I'm leaving work hour early. Screw it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that has to balance uh, oh, it's, feeding, it's feeding my wife, feeding the cats, feeding the dogs, and doing a show. I love how your cat come up to remind you to feed her because my cat did that last Sunday. She sat right they, there and was like, meow, meow, meow. You done yet? I need to be fed. <laughs> I'm like, they show's almost over. Mostly, they do that mostly when Rob Yox is on. <laughs> See, I told he you. Rob is the cat whisperer. That's what they say. I am when, a little bit. When he was talking, I had five cats sitting between me and the computer. Really? The cat was and when he I stopped, when he stopped, they all went different places. Uh, See, so well, I, I wasn't, have a ton I wasn't, of animals. I wasn't five dogs, on that three one. cats, a pig. We have a pig. There's a whole pig. audience market of cats out there for you now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Only Jason, they can subscribe. Jason and Chris, I put my email in the in the back chat for us. Take it down and let's get in contact. Let's let's make some of these things happen, man. Let's get this going. Right, like right I'm let's ready, and I've got resources in the sense of people. We can make a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen. Yeah, for sure, guys. Jason, I'm gonna let you run because I know you got to yeah. get out of here. I'm writing down his email. <laughs> Too bad. I'm gonna let you run. All right, man. Thank you guys so much for having me on, and I was honored to Pleasure be on. To meet and you. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, yeah. You, for sure. You we'll too, see you, Jason, friend. tell the audience where they can find you at. Um, yeah, shameless plug, right? Uh, so usually Sunday nights, not this Sunday, because I have an early doctor's appointment and kids to get to school and I guess canceled. So I'm taking a little break tomorrow. Uh, but every Sunday night, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Central, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, uh, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, put in Paranormal Soup, Jason Bland, uh, especially YouTube, you know. Uh, you should be able to find it or Jason Bland or Paranormal Soup and subscribe, follow. We're also on uh, Talk Stream Live's Paranormal Radio app if you just want to listen. If you and there's a 24/7 radio channel you'll find on there for Paranormal Soup where I play a bunch of my old reruns on there. I need to update that list. That's another maintenance thing I need to do with the show. But yeah, check it out. I just subscribed. Awesome. Yeah, one subscriber at a time for me, man. That's how it's been for eight years doing this. But yeah, hey. eight years, dude. And I mean, I'm telling you, man, you, you do a great job. You and Rob have great voices. There's no reason why you wouldn't, you know, whatever. I mean, you guys should 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 collaborate. Well, should. it doesn't help when Facebook and YouTube are constantly striking me for what this or that or oh, Facebook's yeah, already that told happens. Facebook's already told me they are uh, they are basically shadow banning me. They basically gave me a post telling me they're going to because uh, artificial intelligence thought I was sharing nudity. Which I, I I never never in the paranormal did. field, it, it, yeah, sure, right, uh, right, and, and Facebook I, like literally opened up my feed, and there's like some girl twerking her crap on there, but yeah, I get nailed for nudity. Okay, that's Isn't AI that for wild? you. I think yeah. it's because we're empowering people with information. Oh yeah, really right. the things we talk yeah. about. I think all four of us here, this you know, including Jordan that just left, all of us talk about subjects 
They probably are pretty close the to AI the AI algorithms end. having a seizure. Yeah. Like, oh my god, stop talking about this stuff. I I did a show I'm gonna go, one though. time. I did a show one go. time about the right. uh, the Zodiac killer. And it got pulled from YouTube because they said I was violating a copyright law. And I asked him, what copyright law are you talking about? The name Zodiac Killer was supposedly copywritten. What? It's by that's, who? A little, that's a conspiracy, who? right? In who, itself. the killer? I had, to, <laughs> I had to change the name of the show he had to so that YouTube would allow it on there. Trade wow. All right, guys. Have a great night. All right, I'll night, see you, Jason. Jason. We'll be in touch. All right, bye. So you guys, what do you think? Jason's a great guy. I mean, I like Jason. His info, yeah. his info was awesome. And, and mm -hmm. I think that me and him together are going to be a powerhouse when we collab. Really like do. You said. And, and Chris, if, if you want to interview them, of course, you know, you've been my co-host on here on Saturday. <laughs> but um, remember, I have a hard time doing interviews. It's just. Yeah. Well, he's got a ton of information. I can tell you that. And if there's anybody that I, I liked uh, talking to, I really enjoy. I like, I like talking to him, you know, and, and, and chatting with him and I've talked to him a lot on the phone and off of the air. And, and another guy I used to talk to a lot, Tony Merkel. He's yep. another one that I like to talk to. You know, we, we, we can talk and shoot the breeze of like friends. And then I like uh, Josh and and I like talking to him and, and Barton and, and Chris Garitano. Garitano is another one. He's a really good friend of mine and, and we've had him on. We've talked to him. Did, were you on Rob when Garitano was on? I think I was. I think yeah, I, I think was. You were, yeah, for a little while. Um, but but yeah, Garitano's another one. I mean, like these are the people. The you know Eric Palacios is another one. The, these people names are going to start to be known because, you know, the bigger I get, and 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 it's it's I'm, I don't care what anybody says. It's going to happen. It's manifest destiny for me. I don't. If you don't like the term, don't like it. I don't care. I, I tell people it. it's what's going to happen. It's what's going to be boy. because. I, I um you know I these people that wanted to fight me they ganged up on them and it wasn't the the filthy five it was really the nasty nine there was a, there was nine of them I was Damn. counting today and I said there were nine of these bastards against me um eight eight uh, really I guess seven guys and two girls that got together and they were like we're gonna destroy you and we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and they came up with everything from bestiality to my crotch everything they could my talk God. about. Satanic oh, eyebrows, everything they could think of, the worst, nastiest rumors that they could possibly imagine they could think of. They spewed it out of their disgusting mouths, and it didn't even stick. It didn't work. you know. So they threw me into the fire, and they tried to come up with any dirt they could on me. And I said, look, I don't have a criminal record. From my job, what I do, I have to get a federal background check every year. Yeah. A federal background check, not just a state sit local, you know, county, which I do that too, but a federal background check. And I said, and these people came at me, talk about glass houses. You're living in glass houses and you're throwing big old rocks at me and I'm throwing boulders right back. And but the, the glass was crashing on them. And I said, look, you can stop. Anytime you want to stop, you stop. I'm willing to stop as soon as you do. Yeah. So eventually they figured it out and said, look, we're not going to beat this guy. You're not going to run him off. You're not going to stop him. The, the lies and the rumors aren't going to stick because they're not true. And I think they all just kind of figured it out and said, you know what? We're done. This is it. And, and each one by one, with the exception of one person, um, has said enough is enough, you know, uncle, you know. And um, I think I, I showed the whole community that you don't have to take people's shit. You don't have to take being bullied and being tried to forced into silence. You, you don't have to do that. Um, and you don't have to be a big boy to do it either. You can be like, man, I'm a mid-level channel, but you know, I'm sh I know that one day it's going to be different. I'm not just going to be. A I think you're one of the best paranormal podcasts in in all the paranormal field. Period. Well, I appreciate Point blank, that. Period. And it, it, you know, people who say those things, people who are listening and have stuck by you know that they're not true because we expose ourselves when we come out like this. We talk to people, you see our nature, you see how we are. People see, you know, they see pieces of us to say that that's not how we are. And these people can go around saying these things because there's something that you have that, that they probably want. There's a jealousy factor to it. 
But because we're out here and we're talking all the time, more readily available than not, we're giving a piece of ourselves to, to all of the people listening. Now, some people like to go up and, and, and put facades on, but I don't believe that we're that crowd. We're kind of those no. people who lay it down the way it is. Really? And we give ourselves to the people listening. So when they hear those types of things come across the channel, not this channel, I'm saying across another channel, they say, that's ah, BS. That's BS. It never sticks because they see who we are in that way. And it's crazy too, because you always talk about being somewhat of an outsider. It's like a lot of the people in the, in the spiritual community or in the ancient history community, they never ask me to come on. And it's like, we do the same work and I have a lot of people on, but I rarely get asked on podcasts. It's wild how that happens. And it's just like, I guess, so I, that's why I kind of focused on me and started doing like presentations so I could bring real information to bear for people and not just be a guy like interviewing people all the time. And, you know, a lot of the people coming on where had great stuff, but that's also within these conversations where we give that piece of ourselves to people because we're genuinely interacting with somebody too, which is probably the best part of what we do is how we make friends along the way and, 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 you know, really sit with people and, and affect people in that intellectual way. It's, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. If I have a thought and each of y'all has a thought and everybody out there has a thought, we have one thought. I share my thought with y'all. Y'all share your thoughts with me. We share the thoughts with other people. Uh, suddenly, everybody out there has got like a million thoughts. It's it's expanding everybody's life to do things like this. And yeah. I, I can't understand why people would make things up when it comes to paranormal because there's so darn much out there. It's like... yeah. Absolutely. I don't think anybody could possibly cover all of it in a lifetime. No, not at all. Why make it up when you can just they don't they don't even make it up though? What they, they don't even make it up themselves. They use AI yeah. to do it for them. That's because crazy. they're that uncreative, they can't even make it up for themselves, which is yeah. really sad. I mean, Brilliant. they're not fiction writers, they're just they're just BS artists, and they use AI and they and they buy subs, views, and they even buy comments and likes. Yeah, yeah. Some people sad. don't like I mean, to read. That's really what it comes down to. People yeah, don't like to read. That's all it is. And, and now <laughs> you can AI generate books, you know, and yeah. and if you can tell, I mean, you, if somebody's, you know, you can tell it's it's bull crap. You can look at it and 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 see this isn't legit, you know. Um, but I think that eventually the 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 because I know, you know, what my targets are. I know what what I'm striving for i know what my goals are my goal is not to get to thirty-two thousand people my goal is to get 35 then 40 then 45 and and have the views you know that, that match yeah. it and have the audience and promote the people like you guys people that need to be promoted you know i've had people say ridiculous things i talked about it last night with shane michael crisp was on last night with rye boss and I told him, I said, there are people that have told, chastised me and said, don't promote all these other people because then people are going to go listen to them and then I'm going to give you less views. And I was like, well, then so be it. Because if those people are doing better work than me, then I need to step it up, right? That, that raises rarely all happens. Votes, that know? rarely happens, right? And yeah. and there's enough content across the board that the people will watch everybody, right? Mm -hmm. it, it becomes a circle of people. And in that circle... Basically, we all kind of try and schedule at different times. Never, We never try and overlap each other. That's how I used to do with a lot of other creators, too, is like, oh, you're going that day? Okay, I'm going to go that day. So it's always something for somebody to watch without dragging it out from other people. But I don't really think that's it because we're all kind of – we're in the same niche but also a little bit different in our style of delivery. Too. Everybody's a little different and has some spice yep. to add to the what, meal. What I find really interesting, and I've run into this several times, and I just had it recently with you, Josh. You were talking about the devil monkeys. And that's what I was talking about this week. Oh, wow. The, the ones from Virginia. And it's mm -hmm. like, I didn't hear your show until I had already started mine. And it's, I wonder how often does this happen? Because I was talking to Kyle, Kyle yeah. Filson about it. Because I will go through my list of podcasts that I listen to. And it's like, well, he's talking about the same thing I talked about. And he's talking about the same thing. And it's like, oh, I listen to them because I want to hear what they have to say. 
Yeah, but Kyle, it's almost, Kyle's a good friend of mine too. It's like we're all connected. Like we're we're vibing on the same the, wavelength. The Akashic Records has uh, we're do, <laughs> we're doing the Edgar Casey thing here. We're tapped well, in. Well, are you guys now? I know you guys like Rob. You were talking about not being invited on the podcast, and J Chris, I know you. Are you guys open to to if I can give you guys some people that can interview you guys? Absolutely. I was Absolutely. on. I was on like about twelve podcasts in one month. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I'm always open to other folks because it's like I hate it when you're when I started out doing the podcast. I go up to some person and I'd say, "Hey, you know, I got a podcast. I was wondering if I could interview you." Uh, you know, it's like some of some folks uh, they jump on. Oh yeah, I'd love to be on your show, but you get those guys. It's like they I. They think they're so wow wonderful that mm -hmm. they will only talk to Art Bell. Yeah, and, I had a guy. I had so, a guy tell me he's like, "Oh, you get, if you give me like five hundred bucks, I'm like five hundred bucks, my guy. <laughs> my channel's bigger than yours. Five hundred dollars. Oh you might I've be never given money to anybody channel. to be on my show, right? Nah, it's like, dude, come on, dude. Mm -hmm. no, I'm it's wild. I'm always open to helping anybody out. Uh, I was on a podcast with one guy, and I thought, well, let me go back and listen to what he's done now that I'm already scheduled to be on his show. And I went back and I opened up his channel, and it's like, there's nothing here. I guess I was his first interview, but we got to do that for each other. Yeah, if, absolutely. If we don't go on other folks' shows and do content for them, how can we possibly expect anybody to do it for us? I, I got to say this, Chris and, and, and Rob, and, I, and, and I'm not trying to be a butthole about it to anybody out there, but I turned down quite a few people. And it's it has nothing to do at all with all I, I've told people this on the show, and I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred more times, I only do my friend shows. That's it, period. I was asked to go on The Unexplained, you know, with William Shatner, the whole, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I didn't. I turned it down. I wanted. They were going to fly me out there. You turned yeah. down Captain Kirk. Yeah, I did. Actually, I did. I really did. That's a true story. Uh, Ken Gerhardt got me on there, and he said, "Hey." And then I was offered by about four or five different people to go on coast to coast and say, "Hey," and they said, "Hey, I can get you on whatever to do this and do that." And uh, I just haven't accepted yet because I wanted to write my books and get it over with. But then I have to really, if I'm going to do that, I need to be clear headed and have everything my ducks in a row. And so I thought, you know what? And I, I don't really, I don't need to be on these big shows. If I don't really want to be, I don't really need to be because I made a commitment to myself and to my team. And I said this to my wife, I said it to my listeners, and I'm saying it right now. There's only what 280 people in it now, but I'll tell you. And then people will go back and they'll rewatch this. And I'll say it again. I only do my friends' shows. If you guys wanted me to come on your show, I would do your show. I'll make time for you. Because I don't have a lot of time because I run two businesses besides doing this, which has now become sort of a business, which it's unfortunate that we have to look at it that way. But if you want to stay around, you have to do yeah. that. You have to do yeah, that. And it's not my fault that things make money. It's just the way it is. I mean, pe people say that I'm doing this for the money. Let me show you something. I didn't get one donation tonight, not one. And I don't even care. I mean, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, money's tight with a lot of people. and A lot of people don't have it. I get I get views. We keep the commercials down, and we don't have any content behind a paywall. Mm. Not many people that are our size can say that. I don't, I don't do either. this. I don't do content behind do that, that paywall. A lot of people it's, do that. We, I use it for discounts of when the merchandise comes out, or some. You know, if we have an event, you can get ten percent off a ticket price if there's a paid event. But uh, any any money that supports the podcast goes back into the funding of yeah, the podcast. Same thing and, for us. To get myself behind paywalls to get certain information so I can sort of articulate certain points a little bit better and things like that, you know, uh, FOIA requests and, and hiring people to do stuff. But my, my podcast right now is is more costly than what's coming in through the channel <laughs> that that will happen at the especially when the early early going or when you're trying to build your audience that will happen for the first year we had to pay to play. Yep. We were paying these, these like Anchor and Lipson, whatever, to put us out there. 
And then eventually the second year, you know, at the end of the, I ended up getting a 1099 for like, I don't know, it wasn't a whole lot, but I was like, what? And then I, I, I told that my nephew, I said, what is this? And he said, this is what we made last year. I said, really? Third year, way better. And then the fourth year, I was actually kind of pissed. I was like, damn, dude, I did not, you know, <laughs> luckily I had spent so much money on the show that, you know, it wasn't going to really hurt me, you know, whatever. But then this year, you know, we were doing really well. And then, you know, that that war hurt us a little bit, you know, but we're back on track now. Something and happened I... with YouTube, too. Like, YouTube went from giving anywhere, like, I have 18,000 subscribers, but 18,400, almost 500. But we used to get 3,000 views, 4,000 views. And then all of a sudden, the, the the downtick of views was drastic, almost like a shadow ban of sorts, but it went down drastically. And it's taking time, but it's recovering back to where it was. It's like YouTube, had a lot of people left YouTube because of the mm -hmm. restriction in content and this restriction in speech, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so yeah, we're, and we're actually in the process of loading up everything to Rumble. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna see how over there too. Yeah, we're gonna that, see. That how, is a nightmare trying to move all that stuff. Yeah, are you gonna put the past shows too, or just the yeah? Current? Yeah, we're gonna have to, and and they've made it to where you have to do them one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you do, if you if you do one a day, and you do one a day for a whole year, you may get close to catching up, but probably not. I've got about three hundred and eighty shows. I've, I'm only at two hundred, but I have about three hundred and nine videos on my channel so it's like uh that but besides that and going into like anchor and spotify and uploading the mm -hmm. uh voice podcast i'm behind on everything mm -hmm. i'm behind on everything of a couple months too so it's like so oh, you want to do a podcast <laughs> yeah 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 I so i don't work about 500 shows all together or something and then Damn. who knows how many videos yeah, you, you're of, doing you know, four a week or is that's it four six? years yeah. of uploading bro that's four you're, full years of uploading. you are getting up there with art bell no nah, he, he would do he would do five five hour shows a week then wow. he started doing dreamland on saturdays and then on sundays he was on his ham radio all the, no wonder his wife was like who are you but <laughs> That's he true. was I think he was a addicted to the radio because the guy like how many times did he quit? Three, four now, five? I think four times, right? Yeah. And yeah, he, he would always he, come back. He'd come back, yeah, because that was his life. Yeah. Uh, best radio show out there, but oh well. It was epic. It was absolutely yeah. amazing. I got, I got, to, I got to shut down for the for the night, gentlemen, because I'm about to fall asleep yeah. here at the wheel. But All right, guys, I'll let you run, man. You. It was good, good having Thank you, you on. Thank you so much, and we'll be back whenever you'll have me back. Yeah, back. next Saturday, guys, come back. You got we're it. And Michael Anthony on, and we're gonna talk some more stuff, ask some more strange questions, and hopefully get some strange answers. <laughs> you got it. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you, you so too. much. See y'all later. See you again. Bye. So that, folks, uh, is that, as they say, that the, the, another Saturday in the books. We didn't get a huge crowd, and that's fine. We usually we, we usually get at least 400 people. I think we only hit 300 and something people, and um, that's fine because I really enjoy the Saturdays. In fact, the Saturdays have become my favorite show, and then the Sundays are my second. Tuesday I really don't count because I pre-recorded on another night, and then it drops on Tuesdays. Uh, probably going to record tomorrow. Hopefully my voice will, will hang in there. We got a lot to talk about tomorrow. Got some dog man, some werewolves and, you know, whatever you want to call them going on. Um, we're going to touch on some subjects that we've been touching on and we're going to do it again. And today I, you know, as just like yesterday, I got to record from the comfort of my own home. We put the webcam up and the microphone here. And so, um, yeah, it was convenient when using StreamYard has been really convenient, but we're going to be back in the studio tomorrow because we got to do what we got to do. And we'll have Tony and Anthony on tomorrow. We're going to talk about a lot of weird stuff. I hope that uh, people will continue to uh, patron patronize us and, and bless us with their views and come and listen and, and participate and make comments and do whatever you got to do. 
because we want to keep growing. We want to get bigger. And I, I think that people like Jason Bland, Chris James, Rob Yox, Christopher Jordan, these are the people, the Blondes and Boos, Barton Nunley, Bettina Moss, you know, Humanoid Encounters with Barton Nunley, and then, of course, crypt Crypto Normal Encounters with Bettina Moss. Um, these are the people. Text Front Porch, uh, BMR, Bigfoot Michigan Rob and his show, um, Matt Impsch, you know, uh, all these people that are doing these different shows, these podcasts, these are the people that are going to be moving and shaking in the future. You're going to hear their names a lot. And these are the people that are going to be shaping the future of these fields that are being unified. All this talk of para unity, <clears throat> we're all going to work together and everything's going to be great, right? But I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it happen. And I don't see a lot of people doing it. I see people talking about it, but I don't see people doing it. And now that I'm doing it, now everybody says, oh, yeah, yeah, we've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah, that, that's, you know, sure, sure. Because what ends up happening is that if people aren't going to do something, you may eventually just have to take it over and do it yourself. Because if you want to see something come to fruition, then you have to be the person to take the lead and you have to do it. Doesn't mean that you're a power hungry tyrant, dictator, whatever they're calling me, Jerry Jones, Jim Jones, Alex Jones, whatever. Nonsense. It means that you are doing what needs to be done because no one else is. And I want to see these unification, this unification happen so badly. When I go to the conferences and I watch the interactions, I'll sit there and I'll watch dinner time and watch the people that are talking. And I could see the collaborations beginning to take place, to take hold. It's a beautiful thing to see. It is the best. It's the most wonderful thing to see Barton Nunley, you know, working with all the different people, and see Bettina working with all the different people, people that I consider very good friends of mine, Josh Tinocchio, uh, all these different people making these connections, Christopher Garitano, you know, and then they work together and they do these collaborations. This is what we need. In this field, there are multiple people who came to my conference that I really like, like guys like Lance Hightower, another good guy, guys that I, guys and gals, you know, like the blondes and booze, you know, these are the people that I want to see go somewhere and do something. And I'm willing to do anything I can to make that happen, because this is a community that I care about and I fought very hard for. This last six months has been hell on earth. And my, myself, my wife, my nephews, uh, my team, we have endured serious, just serious attack after attack after attack on our character. They assassinated our character any way they could. And guess what? We're still here. They went after Bettina, and they besmirched her name and drug it through the mud every way they could. And guess what? She's still there. They attacked Barton. He's still here. We're still here. We didn't. It didn't hurt us. We, it, it didn't. We just, whatever, we're done. You're not hurting us. We're still growing because guess what? The truth is the truth. No matter how you try to twist it, spin it, mental gymnastics, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's going to be what it is. And we are now building a community and the paratroopers are the backbone of that community. You have us, you have people like the boosters, I call them the, the bonds of boost people. You have the hellbenders, right? You have all these different groups, the inhumanoids, you know, Barton Nunley's inhumanoids. Um, these are the people that are going to shape the future of this community. The people have voted with their views. You guys have voted and said, hey, we want to be here. We're going to be in your chat. We're going to support you. That is the most important thing, is to be here in attendance, watching. And if you can't watch it live, well, you know, watch the replay, right? Because that's what's important. The authors that write books, the people that put on the podcast and the YouTube, check them out, support them, help them, and let's let this community become healthy, strong, and let's grow, grow, grow together. Let's grow together. And let's make something that has never been seen before. And let's go for true unification from the, all the fields, whether it's the ghost field, Bigfoot, Dogman communities, or the UFO alien abduction communities. We need unification. 
We need it because that is what is going to give us the answers. That's where we're going to be where we need to be. Now, I want to say something. Letitia just popped in and said, pray for Matt. Matt Imsch is in, is, is got an infection in his leg, and he needs serious prayer. So everybody say a prayer for Matt, please. Matt is a very good friend of mine. I don't want anything to happen to him. He's an up-and-comer. He's doing big uh, big things, good work, uh, Planet 412. So say a prayer for him, okay? And until next time, which will be tomorrow, everybody, I want you to tune in. We'll be there uh, about 7, 7.30. I'm going to try to be there on time. We'll see what happens. Um, we always try to, but we, work comes up and things are very busy. And uh, I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be here again next Saturday. Tell people to come to the Saturday show. Sometimes we pull four or 500 people. Sometimes we don't. It just, you know, depends. And sometimes, you know, we have a big Sunday. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have a good Friday. Sometimes we don't. It just depends. But I want to see people in the chat interacting and uh, here to learn and here to, to talk about these things and hear us talk about them. We're building something beautiful, something that's never been done. We can't be stopped. We can't be stopped. I'll see you later, folks. Thank you and good night.